Welcome to Oil and Whiskey, an Ironclad Original. I am Josh Henning. I'm Phil Gerber. I'm Jeremy Gerber. Welcome everybody back to Oil and Whiskey, an Ironclad Original, presented by Blade HQ. Today we're going to be talking with the owner of Rad Rides, the one and only, the goat himself, Troy Chapanye. We've also got a brand new in the glove box and a new story time, but first it's time for On the Gas. In this segment, we want to take some time to shout out an individual vendor, shop, or company that's got their foot on the gas, doing great work and taking their projects and industry to the next level. We just got back from, from Columbus uh, a few weeks ago, and we've known guys, the guys from Velocity Restorations for, for four or five, six years, and you know they were in the Bronco game doing pretty much only Broncos. They've been branching out. They've been getting a bunch of chassis for, from us for all different types of things. I mean four doors and crew cabs and Chevelles and twin turbo everything and challengers and roadrunner scouts. Yeah. And, uh, they had an awesome rig down there and yeah, you know, beautiful, beautiful rig. Yeah. When you come around, it's not often you see somebody show up that's like new on the scene that does it right. These dudes kind of round that corner and you're like, Holy shit, this is bitch and wrap trailer yeah. loaded with great. I mean, marketing's just killer. All kinds of trick, new billet parts displayed, right. Done right there. Uh, somebody that's doing it right absolutely check out the guys at velocity restorations on instagram at velocity restoration george panier is the owner and operator of rad rides based in antino illinois their mission is to build the finest handcrafted automobiles in the world i would say that mission really, accomplished yeah, yeah. <laughs> mission accomplished for sure still trying uh, uh troy's work has been Featured on several documentaries, as well as Chip Foose's Overhauling, in 2020, Prime Video released Rad Rides by Troy, a 10-episode series exploring Troy's incredible handcrafted work. And I know you well enough to know that probably wasn't your idea. No, nope, Jared, you know, uh, <laughs> worked with me for all them years and bounced back and forth to the TV stuff, and he really enjoyed it. I brought him to, uh, when we did the TLC stuff back in the day, and he did the one overhauling with me, and... So he left and tried that, came back, left, and then left that. And then now uh, he wanted to do something. I said, yeah, let's, I don't care. I said, just, you can't disrupt the shop. That's the whole thing. And he said, we got plenty of content. Knock yourself out. And uh, he did a pretty good job for, uh, honestly, a real low budget. Um, the COVID timing was terrible for him. So trying to get sponsors and everything, it was, it was tough. But for the little bit that he filmed, I'm talking like not even once a month, uh, oh, wow. he came up from Tampa. He it it looked pretty good, you know. Yeah, I saw uh, a couple episodes. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was pretty solid. It's too, it's too bad he didn't, you know, couldn't get a little bit of money behind him and stuff. But you know, maybe later. Season two. Yeah, you yeah. never know. Yeah, what's maybe later. Happen. It's tough though. I mean, it's just so. You know, when you're trying to, I made the decision a long time ago. Uh, I like doing the TV stuff back when it first started. You know, me and Chip and all in that, and it's like. Kind of, I, my kids were young. I didn't want to miss any of that. And it's like, you got to decide. It's one or the other. I'd rather build the, you know, handcrafted stuff, Bonneville or whatever, and, and go to sporting events than spend my time doing that the whole time. Now, sure. now that the kid's around, though, I mean, you can, I mean, take a page out of the Tuttles. I mean, have him in there. I mean, just throw a couple <laughs> chairs. I mean, chuck some wrenches. <laughs> I'm pretty calm, but I actually <laughs> threw something earlier this week, you know. <laughs> Uh, you can follow Troy and his builds on Instagram at <clears throat> Rad Rides, thanks to the uh, Rad underscore Rides. But the social media has gotten a it, gotten a bump up. It, it took a, it was a little hiatus there, but now yeah. it's back in action. Yeah, courtesy, young, courtesy of this young man, right? young buck. Yeah, Jack, my son. He uh, Jack Junior. has got a pretty big legacy to fill his grandfather's shoes. But uh, I'm zero social media guy, so he's coming. And uh, like I said earlier, we. We literally didn't put a car on our website. My dad died in 14 and not one until recently. So he was doing that from college and uh, trying to get followers, you know, because my thing is everybody's Facebook famous now, you know. Oh, like, of course. It just wears me out. Yep. So, uh, you got him on TikTok yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, man. It, yeah, it is. It's coming. Uh, well, Troy, welcome to Oil & Whiskey. Thank you. It's awesome to have you here. Super awesome. We've had a ton of guests. And to be honest with you, from the very get-go, you were the one dude that I was just dying to talk to. Well, I appreciate you're, you're it. The, you're the guy that's, like Josh said, the goat. I mean, hands down, whether you like to hear it or not. But that's, I mean. You haven't oh. been a guest yet. 
today it, it's time, but I feel like you've been brought up in every single other episode that we've done <laughs> yeah, some way or the other. You've some point in time. Our building for yeah, Hopefully yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> always good. <laughs> always good, but it's the bar. You know? yeah. so it always, oh, like it always comes this, up. And then I went on Troy's website where I saw a car that Troy finished. And I was like, fuck, it just sucked all the wind out of my sails. <laughs> yeah. Just the customers. You guys know that. And, uh, you know, that's the thing about this deal. Everybody asked me what I'd like to do. And I really, you know, enjoy the like you guys do pushing yourself every day you know that's the that's where i get the satisfaction and uh it's uh the car stuff's a matter of opinion i just always felt that way about it i like bonneville because it's put up or shut up you know we spend half the year doing the bonneville stuff and we've had a lot of a lot of success out there um so it's i like them both but uh you know it's been been lucky people like you know some i always tell everybody everything there's all these styles in this car stuff but some are just accepted more than others, and um, luckily we kind of found a groove, I guess, and uh, all that good stuff. But we'll see. I think I think the best is yet to come. We got some pretty good stuff coming down the pipeline. Well, before we get into the stuff that's coming, how did it how did it all start? I mean, uh, you're this is this is four generations in the automotive stuff, right? Yep. My uh, grew up in a little town of Mantino there, and I always say I didn't get very far. Actually, fifth generation there. My grandfather. Uh, was the guy in town, if you needed anything well, to go see Johnny. He was a pipe, union pipe fitter and like a serious craftsman guy and had a one-car garage with a steel floor, and I spent a lot of time in there scrubbing st rusty goddamn pipe. <laughs> and uh, So I learned how to, I say I learned how to weld pop cans together with him, and then my dad had an automotive shop, just general automotive stuff, and uh, tore engines apart, messed around with that. So I kind of got a little mix of both, but I rode dirt bikes. I played every sport in high school. And uh, and you know I still have four years of eligibility because I didn't go to college, so <laughs> <laughs> I haven't decided what I'm going to play yet. So, uh, but so it it just was I grew up around it, but I was pretty diversified. I didn't a lot of the guys like Chip and Brizio and a lot of these guys. I mean they were cars only, and I I was into everything else. So it just kind of went to work as a mechanic for my dad out of high school and started this stuff at night. You know, my grandfather had a 66 Chevelle he bought brand new, and I grew up in that car, and he blew it up. And uh, that's what started this whole deal and just kind of went to the Street Machine Nationals in, I think, 86 the first time and kind of seen what was going on, and then it kind of spawned and took off from there. 86, what are you, like 12, 13? <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was lucky, actually. <laughs> I was lucky because uh, I had a hot rod of the year in 90, in 92, I was 19 and you know, obviously 21. So a lot of that was just because Gray Baskerville took to me. You know, a lot of these guys now don't know who Gray was, but he yeah. was Hot Rod Magazine, period. Yep. And uh, luckily hooked up with him right away. And I did it with my mom and dad, you know, as a family. So I think they liked that also. But I, I got on the coattails of Boyd, Posey, Barry Lobeck, Brizio. All them guys took me in when I was young. And we had a lot of good, a lot of fun with them. You know, and back then, obviously, you had to go to the events. You know, there was no social media, so you either oh, yeah. showed up everywhere and spent all the time having a beer in the parking lot. I, every deal I ever got was from having a beer in the parking lot, like with a vendor. Um, and uh, so they don't, they don't yeah. teach you that in, in business school. <laughs> no, you know? no, no, that was that was the the sell point, you know. But uh, you know, it it just it just took off and kept going. And you know, people yeah. ask you, "Oh, do you ever see this coming?" I'm like, "Nah, I don't think I don't even think about next, tomorrow, let alone you know." We so, talked about that a lot, though, on the that you had to be at the shows. We've talked about that on a couple episodes. And even before we started sitting down here, you talk about, you know, Instagram famous and people, Facebook famous and stuff. And it, there's a lot to be said. The fact that prior to the social media, like you said, you had to show up. That deadline was that deadline. It was no, you know, there was no quit. It yep. was. And what I liked about it, and these guys agree. I mean, I used to run out and get hot rod magazine and see what Boyd was doing. I mean, he was the guy, you know, so you always want to see what he was doing. And it might as well and, be, you know, a million miles it away. It was, yeah, yeah, it was. And your only your only avenue was that, you know, the magazine. And, uh, you know, now it, it's kind of tarnished, I feel. It's good and bad, but, you know, before you go, everybody knows what you're bringing. So I kind of, we kind of like just more being to ourselves and just show up with it like the old days. It's more fun, you know. But, yep. um, but you know, then you got the guys posting everything they do every day, you know, which kind of gives it away. But whatever, I know that's the way it is now. So when you rewind to the the street machine nationals, you go out there as a young, young buck and you decide this is what you want to do. When you're looking at the cars and stuff, do you decide this is just like kind of what I want to do? Or do you decide this is, I want to be the best at this? I mean, what's your, 
what's the attitude? What's the mentality? What's the thought process? Or like, oh, this would just be kind of cool to do you know, for a living. My grandpa brainwashed me early. It was uh, he's the guy that I mean, I'm telling you, he'd bring this rusty ass pipe home from his his jobs and. I'd scrub that shit till it was like chrome and it was never good enough <laughs> ever, you know? And it's like, he, he always, you know, he's like, uh, there's only one way to do things the right way. And he like wrecked me early and brainwashed me bad. And so then anything I tried to do, you know, even early on, I was like, you know, I, I just want to do it right to the skill level I had at the time, you know, and, and it just kind of slowly developed from there, I guess, you know, and then obviously I did okay on my own. And then, George was my first big customer, which obviously is a home run. Yeah. And uh, we built a sniper, and uh, after that, it was kind of took off pretty well. But um, I don't know. It's just, you know, you guys know it is all the hundred-hour weeks. You know, that's what I try to oh, tell yeah. my kids. You know, do something that you really like to do, but try to do it and make the money in forty hours. Because I sure <laughs> to help. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or do you know do it well and do the you know knock those hundred-hour weeks out for as long as you can, and then you might somewhat cross the finish line to where you can roll it back to like 60 hour yeah. weeks here and there. And that's where, that's where we're at now. It's uh, and my biggest thing is we were big into sports, you know, all, him and his brother and sister. And I mean, I didn't, that was more important to me than anything. So my old man, me and my old man fought a lot in early days. Cause it'd be like, nah, I coach softball, like nine new softball. That was my passion yeah. with my daughter and that. And I mean, I would just leave and go do it. You know, and he's back to shop. MF and me and you know <laughs> when you're leaving you can't do that and this now I'm like yeah, too bad I ain't missing yeah. this shit you know and uh so I really paid attention to that that was most important to me and I probably could be a lot further in the car game I think if I'd uh surpassed all that but I'd never trade it you know that was huge a lot of guys I know Chip hey. has sacrificed a lot oh I'm you sure know, I mean a sure. lot yeah, you should give a Dude. class on that. That's probably like the most important thing for our industry. We get all the guys that just work, 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 yep. and the family and everything else comes second. Yep. But you've, you've been one of the few guys who can balance both of them. And yeah, you have to. You know, it sucks. It uh, even now. You know, if I'm home on a Sunday, I'm over there messing around because you want to be now. You know, it's now you got the right customer in there. They appreciate it, and it's fun. Yeah, you know, it goes through them phases as you guys know, getting there. Or you get the customer just wears you out or it's a pain in the ass or you know that's no fun but uh but now it's it's always been fun but it's a lot of fun now and i'm sure i'm glad like my his his sister played division one softball and i made it to every game four years practice game i don't care where it was at in north america didn't miss one so that's my that's my that's, claim to fame that's, that's cool <laughs> i missed columbus for the first time this year because my son made a travel baseball team for the uh eight and under yeah. So he had a, had a tournament, so I had to stay home from Columbus. That's it was a tough decision, but that's an easy I'm thinking of making yeah. the right one. That's the yeah. easy oh, yeah. decision. That's the best best thing you'll ever do, I'm telling you. I got, I got goosebumps right now. <laughs> I, that's something, I mean, that's commendable. It's always been, you've been kind of a role model with that because it always comes up, you know, in conversation. We are at the good guy shows. I think you and Bobby, always the same yep. way you hear. Oh, where's Troy at? Oh, he's, you know, his kid's got a, you know, a yep. ball game or a softball game. Bobby was the same, same way. way. And you're like, you know, that's to be a great fabricator bait great car builder is one thing, but to be a great family man in addition to that, yeah. I mean, that's he's, that's right. the total, you're the total Dude, fucking package. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a I better mean, person. Yeah. No, he's, he's a better person. Better, yeah, better, no, better, no, no, right. Damn it. <laughs> fucking yeah. hero. No. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough, but yeah. I mean, like I said, I could be a lot farther, and I think, in not not maybe necessarily building the cars, but like Brizio from day one told me, hey, you gotta, you need to build parts. You need to sell parts. Yeah. Gary K, same way. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Gary or not. Uh, styling Concepts, you know, was huge back in the day, and yep. he was the guy. I mean, the guy could sell anything. And I introduced him to Jack at Columbus, and and, and I said, yeah, well, Jack's going to – I want Gary to come over and talk to me and Jack about, you know, starting this little parts deal on the side and stuff. And he's like, you son of a bitch. You know, I told your fucking grandfather. Yeah, 20 years ago. <laughs> I told you. He's like, oh, third generation is going to get it right. Yeah. So, well, but The thing you got – The reputation. Yeah, yeah that's right. Just, right. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can, you know, you know – It'll benefit, you know, I yeah. think so. Yeah, I mean, all that time you've spent just building the brand, I mean, now it makes it so much easier because you slap that Rad Rides name on yeah. anything. I think and people, it's, you know, well, you're people, also going to buy it. the product that you're making is going to work because yeah, you've used so many other products and you've That's figured right. out the, what's right. going to solve those problems. It has to work. I mean, you know, obviously it's a lot of cosmetic stuff, but it the stuff we want to try to do is stuff we've used and figured out and that fixes problems as much as it does cosmetic shit um, because it's there's enough of that stuff out there. 
That's good stuff. I mean, we were just talking about that when you came in. That was the first thing you mentioned was the brake kit yep. that you're working on, which, uh, you know, you know, we know you, you mentioned it. And right off the bat, I told you, you know, 50 different brake issues we've had, manufacturer problems, that things we've gone through. And you've experienced the same thing. So, you, like you said, you're creating a solution for guys. You're saving a, a, a guy hundreds of hours of work because you fucked with it. We fucked uh, with it. You, you've had to out. deal yeah. with you know, eating all that to create the right part. Yeah. A lot of our market, as you guys know, and it was worse 20 years ago, we're the R&D guys. Oh, yeah. You know, you buy this stuff and like, oh, that's cool, you know, and then you spend, you know, you put it on and, you know, and the guy pays for it and then you work on it out of your pocket for about 30, 40 hours, you know. Yep. So it just pushed us to, especially the brake thing, you know. A lot of these guys, we've always tried to do all the, you know, from day one we did the first power tour and, I mean, I did probably, I don't know, 15 of them damn things, and then all the good guy stuff. We tried to always drive everything we built cross-country at least once. Sure. And then now we got the customers like Wes, you know, I mean, daily drives this stuff. And, and these guys are, you know, 70 years old. They need to panic stop. And, you know, and it was just, we got tired of working on the shit. And, you know, we finally got so tired of we come across this, the brake booster deal, the Bosch thing, and figured out how to adapt it into what we're doing. It's, you know, it took us about a year messing around with it. And I mean, it's single-handedly, I say it every time, it's the best thing I've ever found in this industry that solves every problem we've all had the whole time. And I don't care what you have on it for drum brakes, rotors, calipers, I don't care. I can outstop you with an 11-inch rotor and a single-piston caliper, and you can put six-piston, 15-inch rotors, I don't care. Yeah, that's I mean, a, it's that's a home, That's you. a home run. Uh, so it's, uh, it's good, and we're just kind of getting that. <clears throat> up and running we had to fight the chip shortage of course you know getting them but we've kind of kept it quiet just till we get some inventory and stuff and uh um, so now we're going to kind of slowly you know start leaking it out and that's why i want to give you guys one to use because once you use it i tell everybody once you put it on and use it you'll, you'll never use anything else because you can mount it underneath the frame you know right angle kugel thing under the dash and yep. it looks nice on the firewall like wes's 41 is a pretty high-end car and it's right on the firewall so it's you know good enough looking but it just works, so that's Hopefully, fantastic. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can't tell you how many dollars we've thrown away oh. e experimenting with brake stuff. Yeah, I mean, you take that like the ABS thing, oh. that electronic, you know, all-in-one master accumulator. It stops great, like yeah. three Until or four times. Yeah. Before, yeah, you know, and it then, just yeah leaks under the dash. Yeah, and the problem with a lot of those things too is you you commit to it. Like when you build the car. It's not like you could just go, I mean, you know, you can't just go backwards. Be like, no. Oh, I had a power booster. I mean, now that like, that's out, you know. start going back to putting big cam big blocks in them now. Yeah, you don't need, you don't need no vacuum, baby. Right. No yeah. vacuum, right? See, I'm high tech eye booster, man. I'm into technology. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's it's the real deal, man. It's the, it's over. You put it on and. That's you know, awesome. Everybody that's bought one from me, the minute, you know, a lot of them are project cars, but the minute they actually put it on and go drive it, I'm telling you, they can't even get in the building and they call and buy more. Damn. I mean, well, that's likely going to be a, it's, it's the real a deal. changing of the guards here. To, and you guys, I mean, as many chassis as you're selling, it's just one less, you know, when you're selling brakes with them, obviously, it's it's one less thing that, you know, when they get it done, uh, fielding that phone call of, hey, you know, sure. it's, and even if that really has nothing to do with you because uh, some builder's involved somewhere and could screw up 400 things, but yep. it's just one less thing that you know that's a done deal. Oh, yeah. And it works. Yeah, that'd be phenomenal to integrate it on is you've got a lot of the chassis like the you know the early pickup trucks we can get a nine inch booster down yeah. on the on the rail but when you get into like believe it or not they're still kind of popular like the 40 fords the 41 yep. 48s guys are still building those you've got such limited space so you end up with you know a, a seven inch booster or something like yep. that and which, it's which wouldn't stop a bicycle maybe yeah. once right yeah and how many of those have they sold really a million Two million i mean almost things. almost Everybody. every street rod that's out there has, has got them on there booster. and people have just gotten used to the fact that it'll stop that's as good as it stops but it's as good yeah, as it it's stops it's but, a hot rod it's yeah. a street rod they yeah. they they make peace with the things that they're just going to have yep. to be okay and this with. thing packages six inches so it's less than that yeah that's pretty good it's it's stop other, a freight train other cars you want to hide stuff put it underneath the dash and that kind of package size yep. it should fit nicely it goes under the dash yeah we've uh agnes it's got the roadster shop chassis under it west put forty thousand miles on it that was the yeah. mule car and uh i mean it's a testament to your guys chassis on top of it but forty thousand miles in three years that's and phenomenal. it has a right angle, you know, Kugel mount, you know, underneath there. And that was, his was the test car. I figured what, you know, better when I let, and I, Wes, I let him drive a while. I go, what do you, what do you think about that brake booster thing? He, he said, confident, you know, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, you, you right angle mount, like just a standard, like 
one inch bore manual master. Yeah. I mean, that, you're, you'll Forget be it. just pushing through the brakes. Yeah. So Forget that's it. Yep. Even like the Torino I built, I love that car. You know, I put the trick tilt and stuff down on the floor because uh, yeah. that was a look of the car. Bias yeah. bar and all. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. The 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 only thing that stops it is because it's a manual. You can downshift. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> no. you need three feet. <laughs> the rest of it to lay on the pedal. Yeah. To Forget it. Yeah, yeah the tandem masters. Set up the tandem masters. Yeah. I've never been able to stop no, a car with no. them on there. They're badass, but yeah, yeah. you can't yeah. stop nothing. Sweet. Yeah. Can't stop a thing. Well, going back a little bit, so you go, you go to Street Machine Nationals. You're like, "Yep, this is uh, this cranked my tractor. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to do this." What's I, that's a statement? <laughs> all right. A, I mean, I know he's out in the sticks, but you're yeah, trying. Yeah. Or... Are you pandering to like the Mantino thing it's here? Man, it's yeah. Mantucky. Yeah. He's been around George long. Yeah. He, he's heard yeah. that a few times. Yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. So you go back and you're like, "All right, I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna build something." For that i want to debut there i want to i want to do that thing do you have in your mind the vision right then does that kind of come along the way well you know it, it's a thing that developed obviously like back in the early 90s when i had like success with hot rod and the stream machine nationals it was all that you know the monochromatic thing was because i didn't have the money for the chrome part of it and that was kind of the thing scott sullivan and myself i feel kind of maybe got that going and uh so that that kind of took off and i picked on the weird cars for Several reasons. I didn't. I hate looking at the same thing even today. I'd rather like down there in your shop. There's a lot of different body styles. I'd rather see that than the same thing, even if it's not done sure. perfect or whatever, right? So '60 Chevy. You know, I did that in '90. I mean, nobody even was restoring a '60 Chevy in 1990. You know, I painted mint green, and I had the only set of void wheels at the Street Machine Nationals in 1990 because they yeah. hadn't crossed over yet, right? Sure. There was all Weld Star and Centerline and all that. So. It was yeah, yeah. So I was brushing the trim, and you know, it was all beat to shit. But I was brushing it, you know, and uh, and so it kind of, you know, I don't know. I kind of developed that style. And then a the fifty Buick, another weird ass car, um, but a little more performance based, but still terrible colors. You know, peach and orange and purple, and they're, you know, not terrible, it worked then. Yeah. Time, you know, they're coming back. Yeah, I know it, it worked yeah. then. But, I, I was uh, telling Troy we were down there looking at the OBS. I was looking at, I'm googling pictures of. The cars you did yeah. in the 90s for inspiration on this car so i'm yeah. like all right dude that's how the motor let's do the motor all like let's just fucking paint it white you all got monochromatic it. Yep. got it raspberry i, mean, yeah. I tried all the colors <laughs> yeah. uh bobby it bothers bobby the most i think galloway he goes your yeah. colors look like baby shit you know like, you looking <laughs> in diapers or i'm not you know then we went through the whole green phase which i like the most but um it's kind of funny i had roger's little 32 even uh Brought it to Columbus because it hadn't been out in a while, and that's 90th anniversary of 32. And that kind of gray green color we did 20 years ago, that's the dealer shit now, right? Everything's that oh, yeah. Yeah. creamy, monotone color. So I don't know. We've always, uh, I always get Boyd stuff, even back in the early days when I hung around there a lot. You know, I'm like, you got one, you know, it was either black, red, or yellow. Yep. And that was it, you know, and he had great success with it, but it just gives the car some all black character. with Bobby. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, Bobby, Bobby only Bobby paints one color. He never got past that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he gets it slick too. <laughs> who made that? About... Who made that PPG paint chart that was just all chips of black paint with a different name underneath them? A picture <laughs> yeah, of Bobby, Bobby. Bobby. The Bobby yeah, Alloway yeah, collection. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're at Columbus. Uh, just what, a couple weeks ago, we're in there late dropping off the. It was like two o'clock in the morning. We got there late. We're dropping off the OBS truck after the photo shoot. Put that inside, and then we're walking by, and Rogers thirty two is there. Oh shit! That thing's back out and looking at it. Man, that thing's nice. And Jeremy's like, "That's one of my favorite 32s ever." Walk away, and he's like, "Fuck Troy!" <laughs> like, I mean, this thing's been that that many years ago, and it's just it was like it's two still, o'clock in the morning. And we're walking. It's still, like, nobody's yeah, caught up Troy. to it. Yeah, yeah that know? was fun. It's, I mean, that it's all team effort, you yeah. know. And I guess to finish the statement earlier is like it's evolved. You know, I was didn't have the money for the chrome on my own shit, so it was all brushed or painted. And then we went through the whole airbrush trim thing when Bob Thrash worked for me back in the day and Scott Sullivan did my Buick for me because um, that's just kind of what it was you know and then then it evolved now obviously we make all the trim and it's just the stuff's more timeless when you make the trim you know and what well, we always we've kind of the, ch- the styles have changed over the year but now we really take a lot of time and looking at the car and I and a lot of people you know like oh you got a rendering neck now we don't we don't do many renderings you know we get the car to a certain point and I always say you got to let it tell you what it wants a little bit you know, whether it's spoke wheels or white walls or a certain color. And um, some people get it, some people don't. But, you know, it. it we're, I think we've done a better job the last 15 years of building stuff that 
is more timeless. Like if you see it now, you're not going to say, oh, that was built in 1990 because it's that color or it has them wheels on it. So we've tried to pay a lot more attention to the style in each car to its car. You know, hopefully you might know we did it because of the quality, but not because we keep putting the trademark same look to it. We're going to get some Bob Thrash stories. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, boy. Oh, he, Bobby. He, he, he came down here to do some graphics once. Yeah. But... He, we had a good time in the early days. I mean, we really did, and he was very creative. Could have had a, a, a great life, you know, right there because I had the customers early. You know, I had George and the guys, and, and we had the customers, and I had a good team, and he just the guy just couldn't show up, you know, day to day. And in, in the early days when it was just, you know, two or three of us, yeah, whatever. Like I built a sniper. It was me and my dad and him, and, you know, Bobby, Bobby Walden helped me on that one on the metal side of it and know that. and uh yeah bobby was building motorcycle tanks in borger texas that was it he'd never done any car stuff and um mark warwick uh, uh from amarillo me and him were buddies from the power tour in 1990 and he's like hey i got a buddy up here that's a pretty good metal shaper and you know would be interested in helping you on a sniper and i'm like okay so i got hooked up with bobby and uh that was really his first car project and we went to borger it was kind of a fun weekend chip flew in i went and um we kind of cut the car up, moved it around, and kind of tacked it together. I already had the chassis kind of started on it. And that was a fun weekend, then brought it back, and then Bobby came up and worked, worked at the shop for a while. And Bobby actually was our first babysitter. Uh, Jack's <laughs> sister, uh, we just had her, and Bobby was up there working, and, and uh, we, we needed to get out, so he was our first babysitter. So It's interesting you said <laughs> that he was your first, because I've got a Bobby Walden story actually just came, I just remembered. So this was probably 10 or 10 or more years ago. Uh, SEMA walk in the uh, lobby, saw somebody, I can't remember who it was, just shooting the shit talking. Bobby Walden walks up. I'd never met Bobby prior to that and uh, introduced himself. We're talking. So I think maybe it was Andy Leach or whatever I was talking to. Anyway, Bobby's there. Bobby Walden, unfortunately, is going through some personal stuff at that point in time in his personal life. And uh, he's just like, you know, I just drove up here. I'm, I'm here. I don't have a place to stay or anything like that. And I was like, Oh, well, I got a, I got a couch in my room. If you want, it was more one of those, like you make the offer. No, no, don't worry about it. You know? Yeah. He's uh, like, Oh, do you took it. The offer. He's like, okay, cool. He took it. Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got my bag right here. I'm like, all right. Hell great. yeah. This was late. <laughs> so, up, so we went, you know, went to the room and all that. I was like, dude, it's like, you know, two or three in the morning. I'm going to bed and stuff. No problem. I wake up the next morning to get, I got to go to the show, you know, and uh, wake up and there's Bobby sitting on the couch and nothing but his whitey tidies. That's Bobby. <laughs> he's like, uh, you need anything? I was like, no, man, I'm, I'm good. I'm need going to, to the show and stuff. And he's like, okay, no problem. I'll, uh, I'll lock the door when I leave. All right. Damn. See you, Bobby. Yep. <laughs> Teabag. That's his name. We call each other Teabag, but he had the most incredible shop in Borger, Texas. Borger's up in the panhandle, just North Amarillo. You know, Phillips Petroleum was, I mean, it was an incredible town back. I'm going to say maybe seventies, I guess. And it was like 60,000 people. And when I, went, when I went up there to work with Bobby, there was only 10,000 left because Philip shut down. It was unbelievable. It was like a little ghost town up there. Yeah. But he had the baddest ass brick building in, you could ever have for a shop in that little town. And, uh, and he ended up wandering out to California with SoCal and all them guys and that. But uh, talented guy, learned a lot, of, a lot of metal shaping and welding from him early on. Um, and uh, it was those were just the fun projects having the right customer. You know, George was, you know, behind that, so we were able to get the right people involved, and it made a big difference early. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Bob just kind of got lost in the shuffle of just not wanting to show up every day. Telling a guy, but you know, and uh, you know, my wife, I'd pay him. You know, you'd have, like you said, do our work. You'd pay him before, during, and after. You know, and my <laughs> wife finally got fed up with it, and it just you know parted ways. But. He was, he was big in the beginning, you know, on kind of creating that style that we did then. And then it transformed into making all the trim and the different styles as you learn more and uh, um, get new people working for you, you know, and it, it kind of transformed into uh, the style we have now, which it's always a community effort at our shop. I mean, everybody's involved. It's not, I can't draw a lick, you know. So like Adam that works for me, he's, he's kind of, a lot of the stuff we've done the last 15 years is, come from his brain a lot i mean we talk about it but he's a probably the he's the best hands down i've ever seen in, in our industry uh and, and you guys have heard me say it earlier he could he could build every car i've ever built by himself 
He could rent. If you had a competition in the world, he could design the car. He could build the whole thing, body from scratch, chassis scratch, whatever. He could do all the paint and body, do all the upholstery, make all the trim, whatever. Um, and uh, just uh, when he showed up, uh, it was kind of funny. We were doing the Rogan TLC show at the time. He's sending me this stuff back in, you know, 07. He was going to McPherson College of stuff he's doing this and that. I'm kind of like, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden, somebody stand over my shoulder one day, and it's him. He's like, hey, I'm Adam. I'm like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, god damn, did I tell him to come? Or not? <laughs> I don't think I did. You know, <laughs> He goes, hey, we moved to Chicago. My wife's going to college up there. I'm like, well, it's cool. Come by Monday. We'll see what you can do. And, I mean, the rest is history. I mean, and he's a great teacher, you know, on top of it. You know, I've... Uh, Cause he's, his cell phone number. I just like to text him. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he's got a brother or something, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, he's a great, like the most humble dude. Yeah, you nicest guys guy. Yeah. Every time I meet him, it just yep. but, always great to talk to. And you know, he's one of those guys you don't, you know, you don't see him all over Instagram. Zero blast and everything he's done. He just does it. Nope, he just does it. Yeah. And you're right. And I mean, he can do anything better than. 99% yeah, of most that's, people. That's a and, bigger thing than you realize it now, today's day and age. Oh, it's great. everything. But he's a, and then a lot of these guys, you guys know, you get somebody <clears> with <throat> some talent, they got a goddamn ego. Nobody learns from them. Yeah. The only way you learn at a shop is you got to have somebody always better than you, right? Yep. That's a willing to teach you. Well, he, he got the Jay Leno Popper Mechanics Scholarship back at McPherson in the day, which was the top student. And then they paid for the school, and you do an internship, like with some of Leno's subcontractors, like these Swedish guys and, you know, that kind of business. So... He learned how to do, you know, handwork, every metal shaping tool, whatever, as a young guy, which which helped. But then he, but he's such a good teacher, and he's humble. You know, he's got four young kids, and um, like Casey, that he's been with me for about ten years. He's my other metal shaper, and they're great friends. And I mean, you can't believe how incredible he's got because he listens. Yep. I've had the guys in there that won't listen, and they got an ego, and I'm like, dude, you're you're. You're standing by the baddest dude that I've been in. I mean, you asked Bobby Walden right now. If you called Bobby Walden right now and said, who's the baddest metal shaper you know? I bet everything my whole life that he would say, Adam. Wow. So yeah. so you got a guy like that that will teach you. And like Casey that works for me, he's just excelled because he listens. And, and you know, we got the equipment. and You got the customer to let you do it right. And it's it's amazing, you know, and that's uh, that makes all the difference. You know, I mean, having the guys around you. And most of my I – mean, there's only nine of us, but – seven of us have been together for over 20 years and the core group you know i've had some good guys come and go and have had some success you know outside of the shop um levi's green was a good guy that came with me he was welding grills at carriage works hmm. over in kansas city showed up as a young guy and that was about his extent and he learned how to fabricate and become a good fabricator and he's got a his own shop now and andy andy leach came and he was another young kid that learned a lot and went off and had some success so um i i you know, I'm pretty proud of that. You know, those guys yeah, both went out and won you, the Riddler you've, Award. You've bred some phenomenal Yeah, yeah. they've done pretty well. There, yeah, really. I mean, they've done pretty good, you know, so it's... Uh, well, it's it, go ahead. It's certainly, back. I think it's kind of big things that we're missing a lot in this generation is the guy willing to teach and the guy is willing to listen and learn. Yep. That I think everybody in this industry, a lot of industries could, could go significantly further if they, you know, had the guy to teach him and they were open-minded enough to learn from him, maybe not a hundred percent of the way, but pick up some things along the way. And they don't hey, realize that their, their individual skill set is only a portion of their value to the company. Yeah, I mean, it's, no, absolutely. It's their ability to work with others, their ability to teach others, their ability to bring others up and, and figure that's, that's more important than their individual skills. We're set. at the point now, I mean, in the early days we take a younger guy and, you know, teach him and everything, but we're so far behind now. You can't, you gotta have somebody who can come in there and have a pretty good skill set and have the right attitude. So now, I mean, we're looking, okay, you got a good attitude, right? You got a little bit of skill and you show up every day. I mean, that's where this is, world's become. Yep. You know, it's yep. crazy. It's uh, uh, finding guys and uh, um, it's, been, it's been really tough. Uh, yeah, it's, it can be a, definitely a struggle, but it's, it, it, it's very interesting when you talk about the, uh, the listening deal because we've had, we've, we've got some phenomenal metal shapers here and we've got, you know, every piece of equipment to shape anything that you want to shape. I never had those resources way back when, when I started, it was me and Chad and whatever the hell we could figure out how to do. And we, you know, bend over it, a welding bottle. Yeah. If you could, you find every radius in the shop from every pole and Got you it. know, that's, that's all you knew how to do, but you get all these guys that, Oh, I want to, I want to shape metal. I want to be a hot rod builder. Like, 
man, this is what I want to do. And then you give them the opportunity and say, Hey, this dude will teach you any, there's take as much scrap metal as you want. And this guy will spend as much time with you want every day after work, jump on the pull max, grab the power hammer. Come in on Saturday. Yeah. Yep. Come in on Saturday. Out of 20 years in business, I've had one guy take me up on that offer and he worked one day, made it half of a wheel tub and then never, yeah. Well, as never you know, did it again. That's it. Just you nailed it. I mean, yeah. metal shaping these seminars. I mean, you got to learn somewhere. Don't get me wrong, but they're making sure. shapes that fit nothing. Yep. These goddamn metal meets that we make a joke at the shop. It's like, was there a fucking wizard out in the forest? You're gonna go, <laughs> you drag a power <laughs> hammer out there? I mean, it's nonsense. You know, it's like, there's a you know, guy brings in a shape. That's great. What's it fit? Nothing. Make the other side doesn't fit. You know. Yep. So, I mean, everybody, you, know, you got to learn and everything. But you know, and, and I had to kind of do it all going through this whole process. But now my joke is my sheet metal starts at eighth inch. You know, yeah. It's like, <laughs> screw that shit. I'm a mechanical fabricator, you know, but you know, especially when you got guys that are so damn good at it. I'm, like, yep. yeah, I'm not going to touch that shit anymore. I can weld anything, but, but, uh, it's, uh, it evolved and, um, you know, and it takes a while to purchase that equipment. You know, I just yeah. got a big piccolo echoed, you know, which, you know, like yeah. 50 goddamn thousand yeah, it's dollars. It's a hell of a machine. Like, but I mean, man, once you have and you got a guy that can run it, I mean, it is unbelievable yep. what we what he does with that damn thing. Yep. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty neat. But it just takes a while to accumulate the equipment. But it, you, it as does. you guys know, you can have all the equipment you want in a building, but if you ain't got anybody that knows how to use it, it ain't worth shit. Yep. You're better off having a hammer and dolly. So well, even if you know how to use, you you get to past the first hurdle of getting the equipment, then you get past the second hurdle of having the guys and the facility and stuff like that. At the end of the day, we talk about it all the time. If you ain't got no fucking style. No, you right. Yeah, it's over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Build whatever you want to build. You know, that's a that's a good point, Josh, because all these years of like, let's say we've had pretty good success. And like I said, the car show thing, once in a while you'll build something that like, yeah, it's pretty cool, you know, and it's pretty that thing's the baddest, right? But a lot of times it's a matter it's always a matter of opinion. But it's uh um you gotta have style and, and I I defended Chip a lot in the early days because, like, oh, yeah, well, they, you should win that because they've got customers spent that much money. I'm like, what the hell difference does that make? Oh, yeah. Give somebody twice the money with, with no skill or design ability, and you, you still got a piece of shit. Yep. I mean, that that wore me out in the early days. You don't hear it as much anymore because even the shops that are doing well that I don't know about because I'm not in the mix of things much, they're doing a great job building some pretty nice cars now. You know, the whole thing is elevated, but... Yeah, that whole thing. Uh, oh yeah, even like Bonneville. Oh, well, he's doing it because you got all that money. What the hell difference does that make? There ain't no guarantees. Right. Yeah. You know, that, so that that shit wears. Yeah, me out. I've always we we talked about that before. That I I think I caught some criticism for calling that just a loser's attitude. You know, it is. Yeah, people didn't like it. Yeah, they didn't. But they didn't like it. But that's a hundred percent right. Like, yeah. I yeah. mean, I've always I've looked at the stuff you're doing, especially with the Bonneville cars. I'm like, holy fuck! Forget the money. Like the money's yeah, yeah it costs no. a fortune. But yeah. that that never ever registered in my mind that was never a thought of oh, of course he's doing it because he's yeah. got the budget how the fuck like right. do you do i mean there's so much knowledge so much i mean fabrication experience you, your life's on the line you're yeah. breaking records Absolutely. this guy's been doing it for you know a hundred years and you go out there and just crush it it's it doesn't matter how much money no. they're spending our joke is is uh you know, we'll, we'll set a record and you have all these some bitches protest you, you know, over something, you know, yeah. and we were like, we want to make t-shirts, stop, stop crying and start trying. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, and you look damn good doing it yeah. too. Like not only does you, you know, you crush the right, but the car looks fucking phenomenal. Well, that was the thing, too. you know, when we built the blowfish, George is the one that drug me out to Bonneville and he's like, Hey, you need to get out. Or there's a lot of history out here and a lot of crossover. And obviously Baskerville was a, a great family friend and that was his life was Bonneville. And, uh, so we went out there, and we and obviously we built the Blowfish. It was a unique car, and the engine was unique with a four-cylinder. But I'll never forget, like, we come out there the first year with it. Go to M, When you go to Impound out there, there's, like, two guys that will kind of tech the car, you know, and check it off in, in the impound lanes and stuff. And we pull up, and I'm telling you, at one point there was 14 guys looking at it because it was done pretty nice. And yeah. I'll never forget, I heard a guy go, oh, this thing, guy brought a show car out here. I'll never forget it, right? <laughs> Damn right. So yeah, yeah. So, that's <laughs> also pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. So a couple guys had to find stupid things wrong, you know, and and I didn't argue much because I'm like the new guy out there, and that's like the click thing out sure. there, you know. So we went back, fixed him up, and luckily we got we set the record right away, and then from then on we've got a lot of respect out there, and and a lot of our guys in our industry have tried to follow us out there and hadn't had any success. Yep. So I I really. 
not being a dick. I just, right. I feel proud. We're pretty good at that. Oh, yeah. Making shit work. I mean, because they've had good customers too. We've just been able to get it right. And uh, so I'm pretty, you know, proud about that part of it. Of, you know, I mean, of course you success. can, all that money. I mean, it's yeah, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, anybody, yeah, anybody yeah. can do that. A bunch Everything's of horsepower. Everything's guaranteed, like, right? Yeah. yeah just like, <laughs> 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 yeah. I think George would just pay enough to go 500. Yeah. yeah. No, he really wants yeah, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I did have the Danny driving, so we, you know, we had we had the yeah, that's a significant super handicap. Danny. Is well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they said he brought a show car, so they got a <laughs> yeah. handicap. Yeah, Danny, Danny's the best. When Danny drove, and we the one weekend we went over three hundred seven times, and that week it was just awesome. Went three nineteen. I mean, that's like the there's only I think four records over three hundred in a door slammer in sixty five seventy whatever years it is out there. Ooh. So it's pretty it's pretty impressive. And George would even say that. You know, going 300 in that Barracuda, especially because it's stock wheelbase, is much harder than going, you know, four or 500 in a liner, you know. And yep. uh, so that was cool. But Danny's Danny's favorite uh, statement is, you know, he introduces himself out there and he goes, I've been faster backwards than you've been forwards because he <laughs> spun it at 290 one year. That was Oh, little, yeah, we've yeah. heard the story, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, a dozen times. So that was... A dozen times in one night. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. Uh, he's he's <laughs> killing me. He goes, I'll have my helmet with me this year. He's trying to get back in the driver's seat. So, uh, you know, that's the only time he's ever serious, that little son, as George would say, that little son of a bitch, is when he's in the driver's seat. He did a great job. So uh, it was it's fun. It's, uh, it's a challenge, but it is. It's like when you're putting, you know... Now you're putting somebody in there, and it's for real. You know, I yeah. mean, you're buckling them in there, and, and you, you know, and it's it's a whole different ball game. And it, it's taken me a while to get a little more comfortable to it, but we're still novice. We go out there twice a year, so it's uh, you kind of. It seems like the blowfish we've it's tested enough where you're safe no matter what. And like a little flathead roadster deal we're doing, it's good. But like when you, the liner stuff is just a different animal, you know. And uh, uh, I don't know, it you still get. Nervous as shit, you know. Yeah, it's just uh, some I mean, serious it's no, speeds. It's no builder showcase at NSR8 wheel, but, I mean, <laughs> it's something. I mean, you got to right? it up, get on the stands. It's you know, probably more teetering. dangerous driving some of the shit we built you're cross probably, country in the early days. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> just that drive from the trailer to the builder's yeah. choice was more Ooh, dangerous drove than the shit out of that thing. How many times you heard? I would drive the shit out of this thing. 225, <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't burped yet. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and, that, and that's, a good, that's a good point because, like, all the years of driving that shit cross country, staring at them gauges, man, you learn oh, a yeah. lot. I could cool anything, man. And that's from doing them cross country drives, yeah. right? And, you know, that there again goes back to the stopping thing. You know, it's like if you don't use them, you don't know. And that's right. what to each their own, you know, whatever you want to do with sure. it. But at least give them the product that if they want to use it every day, they can. And make it in, I remember Boyd, you know, they'd get that shit done at the last minute and, We'd do these in the early days. The cross country drives were terrible. It was like six hundred miles a day through the desert. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like two hundred miles and you all know, have a party and shit. I mean, it was wearing you out. <laughs> <laughs> You'd drive that thing four or five hundred miles, and the tires would be wore off of it and shit. And you know, and, and it's like it made it, but it it wasn't enjoyable. So yep. I kind of took that and go, you know, we need to you need to make them reliable, but make them enjoyable, right? Make them ergonomically comfortable that you want to drive them. And uh, and it. I think that's part of our selling point, I guess. I don't know, um, that the guys will spend the money and keep coming back. And then you get a guy, like I said, like Wes, that just daily drives them. It's a great for us because we learn a lot yep. and get a lot of feedback. And, uh, you know, and, and it just makes you, I feel, makes you look good. It, I, I think guys like, you know, guys like Wes, guys like George, they've elevated the game. You know, they've helped the whole industry so much in that respect that, like, just building all those survivor cars for George, you just keep – pushing to get yep. better and better and better to make the car just perform better, be more enjoyable to drive, focus on the ergonomics, focus on the cooling, focus on just everything you can to make that driving experience so good and keep improving it. That's just, yeah. I and mean, George it's is single-handedly, you guys would agree. I mean, he's like, I always enter, when I tell the George story, you know, I met him in 94 uh, at Detroit, burr haircut. He was probably about 400 pounds in at his overalls on. And I, he was pretty low key then. He'd done a lot of car stuff, but a lot of people didn't know him. And I, I just, I barely maybe knew his name. And he introduced himself. Uh, and me and my wife were sitting there and stuff. And he liked the car that we brought and blah, blah, blah. And that's kind of how I met him. But uh, what you can say about George is he's single handedly been the best thing for our industry in the last 50 years. This hand, industry would hand be style, where it's at right? right now. Whether you're a vendor, a builder, anything i mean and people only know a tick of what he's done behind the scenes because he's never looking for credit 
Yeah. You know? I mean, even at what he's done at Bonneville, people don't realize, you know, oh, they just think, oh, he's they got that's the car over there with the big pit and all the money. And well, he's the guy paying for the second ambulance. He's the guy paying for all the volunteers' food, paying for all their hotel rooms. I mean, all the stuff he does behind the scenes. And and then like I, like with George, I you know I met him through cars in '94, and he spoke at my dad's funeral in 2014. So enough said how yeah. straight up class guy he is. Yeah, hell of so, a guy. Uh, so that's just been. And I always say, I mean, he's he's literally probably spent five hundred grand on food, of going to dinners and <laughs> over the years. I mean, you know, and we'd have parties at the shop. He'd cook for seven hundred people. I mean, you know, whatever, just a straight up guy. And that's what's made this industry so fun. You know, guys like George and Wes and the Marianis. I mean, they're a hoot. You know, now now I'm getting like like Wes's sons. You know, I do work for them, and then like uh, the Marianis, I built the father of the Streamliner, but I built Mark and Dennis like the Model A and the other 34 Roadster Bonneville car, and yep. so we're getting the second generation on a few of them families, and it's just that's the fun side of it, you know. And and you guys know that you get a good customer in here, and it's they appreciate what you do, they know why they're here, and it's fun. Oh yeah, we've had we've all had the other customers it's, that it, wear you out. It's it, just it makes the job so much more enjoyable. Uh, I mean, we've got we got some phenomenal customers. You know, you take Scott or Barry, and it just you, you want to work harder, harder deliver right. it. You want to get more, more friends and less customers. Oh, yeah. no, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And you're putting more of your right. self into each car yeah. and trying to make it better. And yeah, they always end up being our top cars when you have that relationship with the yeah. customer. Yeah, I mean, anybody, a, a, a layman could look at it and know that, oh, that must be for that guy again because this they really did the best on this. You know, Not that yeah. we don't always try it. We do our right. best. We do. But you know, then when you're killing yourself in that 90th hour and they appreciate it, it's awesome. Yep. When you're in a 90th hour and you're like working for a jag off, you're like, it just, it's, you know, why am I doing this? Yep. Right. Well, it's it's difficult from the that level of entry gets higher and higher for new customers as well when they come in when they're calling yep. you. What do you think this thing's going to cost now? Can you give me an estimate where it's at? It's difficult to explain. Like I've got a we got a great group of customers that we have a, a great relationship that we're building nice cars for. You know, if you're asking me how much power windows are going to cost. This is going to be a difficult. Yeah, I just say we're probably. I just yeah, I'm gonna say we're probably, probably not the right place for you. And the easiest thing to say, you know, and it, obviously we've been doing it long enough, is no. Yeah. You know, we've all said yes, right? <laughs> oh yeah. We've all said yes because hey, this is a guy's got some money, and I pretty seems like a pretty cool guy. And yeah. then you build him a car that you wanted to build, not that he wanted. We've all done that. Yep. And then it's nothing but a pain in the ass. Um, I think that's the biggest. And I always try to tell the young guys if we talk once in a while. To different groups you know it's like just do do what you can within what your ability is and just do that right don't try to over engineer it or over design it and you don't have the ability to do it you fall short would you have listened to that if somebody came across 30 years ago and told you that well i had a hard time <laughs> uh anybody challenging me is kind of when i actually didn't <laughs> stepped it up you know um but yeah probably not so that's why i say it well, now you know? i know that's yeah we talk about that yeah. all the time we've yeah. all done the same thing like you said build the car you want to build versus what the customer yeah. wants and then make excuses of all these different things because you're we were building to impress you sure. and to impress bobby and yeah. impress alan and impress all these yep. guys and you were doing the same thing you wanted those peers you know like that's who you're showing off for and trying to explain that to guys you know coming up now I don't know if anybody, if somebody would have said that to me back then, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. You've already got the, like where you wanted to be, you know, I'm trying to get there. Yeah. The one thing I always kept in mind though is, and you guys will agree with it, is no matter what it took when, it, when you brought the car, like we'll just use SEMA, for example, a lot of times you make a commitment to a vendor, Hey, we'll have the car there. And then, yeah. well, then the customer relationship turns a shit in the middle. Oh yeah. Right. Then you end up eating some of it. But no matter what, I was always there because I promised them, and I never had any excuses, you know. Because you can't sit there until everybody comes up looking at the car going, you know, the thing would have been better, but the guy's a dick. Yep. You know, you can't <laughs> you get it done, man. Put it on, <laughs> right? yeah. Don't look right there. It's you, a little... you look like a chump, right? Yeah. So no matter what, I always made sure if I give a commitment, I brought my yeah, best, and there was no excuses and whatever. And and in the early days, I, you know, you had to give and take a, a lot more. Maybe let's say give a little more than take. Well, then as you get better guys, better equipment, get better at it. Now you're you're taking because you, yep. you deserve it. You know, I mean, you figured it out, and it's a tough industry. You know, people see the price of these cars and thinking, oh man, you're just getting rich. You know, but, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 
Oh, First shit. of all, it's labor. I always say <laughs> yeah, that the, right? the higher the price tag on the car, the less yeah. the profit, you yeah. know, or yeah. if there is even any. Yeah. First you know. of all, it's labor, yeah. right? That's the problem. Yeah. You know, it ain't like running the CNC all night. And, right. You know, getting 65 bucks an hour off of it, and it's not complaining. Yep. We've you said know. it before on here, like several times, that the measure of success is that you're donating less. Yeah, you know, absolutely you're, right. You're donating That's a great, less. It's a great statement. At, over time, you know, because yep. all those things of, well, this needs to be done. This needs to be done. I'm not, I'm not going to show up with it not done. Yeah. Regardless, I'm getting paid to do it or not. It needs yep. to be done. You know, and that's a a thing that a lot of people don't know, like about Boyd. You know, I was around him a lot. He helped me a ton early on. I spent a lot of time out there. Um, and you know, only thing a lot of a lot of our industry knows, like Boyd, for instance, as that TV show at the end of his life. You know, and he did that just to make money. Yeah. Because he got tired of chasing the customers, right? So he did that because it was. He was making pretty good money, you know, with TV and all that. But unfortunately, it tarnished who he really was, you know, which sucked. But um, that's just, you know, part of the territory, I think, you know. A lot of these TV shows have helped and hurt both, you know. And uh, um, I guess it's a necessary evil, but it just depends what your path is. Well, we talked about, you know, you got to have the right customer. talked about, you know, um, highlight cars and stuff. There's, there's two cars that have come up since the very first podcast we've done. Um, and that's the G force Cuda and the chicane. And it doesn't matter who we're talking to. It doesn't matter on levels of cars, everything. Those two cars come up all the time. Um, so Glenn talk about the got to have the right customer. Yep. You know, how did, how did the chicane come about? Where was the first conversation? Oh, you need like, to Probably needed a big car to put all the fucking broads in the back, you know, something like that. <laughs> Subwoofers. Yeah. You know, the Glenn, the Glenn story is funny because uh, Angelo Giampetrioni, which was Ford SVO, and, and you you guys, have you ever met Angelo? No. He was, when Ford Motorsport used to sh- display at all the events, um, he, was Ford, he was Ford SVO. He started it for Ford. And he had um, uh, uh, Grashie at Auto Supply in Michigan. He's, which was basically the first summit, okay. per se, right? Sure. And uh, so he has a lot of a lot of history, a little Italian guy. And and I was running Boyd wheels at the time, and he's like, "You fucking asshole! Why are you running these billet wheels? You live right by him, you know, and give me shit." And I'm like, "Whatever." So he introduced us at dinner one time, and that's how I met Glenn. And uh, so then blah 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 evolved, and you know, built a car and '62 Chevy. That was an easy choice. Um, and then I just finished a twin turbo car for John Meany back in gosh it was forever ago let's just say maybe mid 90s um and we did it as a mule car just some old shit box corvette but we did that because john was the guy that started digital fuel injection standalone and we were great friends he grew up eight miles from me and blah 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 and uh he helped me he's the one that made me look good on all these weird co- engine combinations sure. early on you know and uh so anyway we I said, I brought him for a ride. I go, this will be easy. You know, we had the Corvette done. It was running good in, in mid-90s. And I'm like, go, oh, let's go for riding the Corvette. Well, I knew once he got out, it's like, that's it. Don't he needs it. a twin turbo. I mean, that, that's like a no-brainer, yeah. right? instant sale. So that was that. And then the best part of the whole chicane thing was, uh, you know, Glenn's in a wheel thing. So that's when the 22 thing was kind of coming around. So that, that kind of is the only thing that I feel that dated that car just a tick is that the 22 is in the back maybe. But uh, so we did that, and I, I sprayed the colors out. And he come down there, and I showed him to him. I was pumped about it, you know, that shit green and everything. <laughs> I mean, I was excited, right? And he's like, you're fucking whacked, was his exact words. <laughs> he goes, I can hear it. He goes, you're <laughs> fucking whacked. What's in the water down here? And I'm like, he's, but you always get it right. So he's like, yeah, whatever. And uh, so we did that. And then and that was kind of one of the first, I guess, twin turbo street machines maybe you know i mean i was like what yeah. 2000 i guess right um that kind of maybe kicked that off and we did my dad's 61 biscayne with the big like the 20s and 18 bulls crap earlier on did six power tours with it so that kind of maybe got that combination going a little bit and and then we did a chicane and then my buddy ty we unveiled it at sema that's when like back you could like make a statement at sema right so we had a cocktail party at 5 30 when all the vendors said, i wanted the vendors there yeah. So we sent out really trick invitations. I mean, because my buddy was a marketing machine. He's the one that came up with, like, my original gear logo and stuff. And um, he worked with Orion back in the day when I used to do all the car audio junk. And uh, 
So he we had a great party, kicked the car off. I mean, every all the manufacturers you want were there because it was after the show, and it was really dynamite. You know, now you go to Seaman, there's 47 unveilings. You can't. Yeah, it's hard to it's it. hard to make a statement. Make a splash. Yeah. So then it just it it we've you know Jim Griffin did the upholstery for which all that we did the suede just kind of wacky shit and yeah. um you know and still to this day on the pedestal. But it, it, on yeah. the pedestal. like yeah. if you bring it out today, it still fits in. You know, it's Absolutely not. Does. It's not like well, yeah, that's twenty years ago. Um, and I guess the best part of that car was we did probably four power tours in it, and then a good guys tour. So I mean, it's legit. I mean, it's I don't know, maybe twenty thousand, twenty five thousand miles on sure. it, and it's you know, whatever, eleven, twelve hundred horsepower, but rides good, drives good. It's had, we had issues with it going cross country, hood hood latch breaking, hood flying up, you know. Had the Mississippi hood pins in it, had the camouflage duct tape holding it down. And, <laughs> and any, anytime I'd try something, my mom was a passenger because, like, anytime you stop, like, hey, can I get a ride in the car with you? Like, no, my mom's with me. You know, so uh, <laughs> she, she was always my co pilot because then nobody'd bother, you know, you know, when you're trying to prove shit out, you know, you yeah. want some guy, like, what's that, you know, so, so uh, it was, it was at, good, you know, I mean, Indy, Indy, it, Columbus, it worked. I mean, Indy, good guys, yeah, there, yeah. Right outside the trailer, like, yeah, Let's talk about making an impact, I think. We were at the, was the Adams Mark at the time. Yeah, right? Adams Mark. We had stereo, yeah. man. That was the place. Yep. You, you yep. had to hustle back there and get the spot, yep. right spot, so you could times, play the stereo. Times were different yep. back yeah. then. We yeah. were like on the seventh or eighth floor up there overlooking the parking lot, and you pulled in with that thing. And I remember we just came like running down. Chad was talking about it leading up to it, and that was just like, holy shit, what is all yeah. this shit? The tail light opened up. Yeah. Like, what is that? Yeah, yeah afterthought. Yeah. Oh shit, we forgot the, the key. How do we get the tail light open it up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> up until probably about maybe a year or two ago, it was my wife's measure of everything. So I mean, we were when we saw it at Indy, you know, we were, we were just darting out building cars, you know, trying our best, doing what we knew how to do. And remember when she saw that car, you know, it was she didn't mean it to be as mean as it was, but it was kind of like, oh, those that one's way nicer. What do you mean? Why not? Well, like, I mean, it's just like everything's like better. <laughs> so that, but Fuck every, you. no matter what was built, it was always, well, it's no chicane. It was, you and know, if it, per measure of, of a perfect. If it car. wouldn't have been the colors, I think, you know, that was oh, I, I, key, I'm, I'm right? Because yeah, the body, I, I mean, the bumpers colors. are tucked in. And yeah. I mean, the only thing I'd do different, people I ask you that all the time, is door handles. You know, obviously, yeah, 100% would have door handles on it and mirrors. Yep. You know, that's the only things I would add to it. But they have wipers? No, no, Rain hey, X really... and Speed. But the colors, the <laughs> colors, the twin turbo thing was huge because nobody had seen that much in our world, yep. right? So that was kind of maybe the way that was presented. But the colors were big, and uh, and then the suede upholstery was kind of whacked out. You know, I mean that. Yeah, it just lo- it looked it, theme a little. It bit. just looked like you wanted to be in it. I mean, yeah. I still I can vividly I know what the fuck seat belts were in it. Like I can. Yeah, it had those aircraft. I, yeah, belts. I can like visualize yeah, the seat the belts, the seat like and, yeah. yeah. So it was it was good. Bitching. I mean, it was. Uh, it I was just decided to do Biscayne over the bubble top. I like the postcards because they're more like we're building more like tough power stuff, yeah. not pretty stuff, right? So I always like the postcards a little better for that reason. Yeah, we got a it was a sixty one the flat roof. Yeah, sixty one flat roof uh, Impala. It's got Impala trim on it. Survivor original yeah, black true. with white, uh, you know, fucking two tone. I've been trying to sell that car. To a customer yeah, as a survivor build, build. For no one wants to really yeah. nobody will do it because it's a flat roof. Oh. Like dude, the flat the roof, roof is yeah. so yeah. sick. They're it's, much cooler. Yeah. yeah, the bubble tops are pretty, but they're that's the problem. They're pretty. Yeah, right. And it's depending bad, on what you're building, you yeah. Know. But now it was it was good and horrible uh, visibility out of a bubble top too. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah, see that a one damn little thing, pillar right? like that yep. big on the back. <laughs> that's your blind spot. But me and me and Glenn, that was just great. We become buddies and. School, like, well, that was honestly, that was the first true track, too. Because, like, when I built that, you know, because there were the turbos and everything, where I'm like, we got to package this stuff tight, you know, because at the time, street and performance was the gig, right? You know, the oh, air conditioners man. outside the fender over there. <laughs> With a turnbuckle and yeah, clevises. Yeah. And, and you have to have <laughs> chain mill gloves on so you didn't get cut to death putting the shit on. Yeah, that the chrome fucking chrome would just slice an artery. And, and Mark was the greatest guy, <laughs> Campbell. Oh, phenomenal. I mean, Fantastic yeah. guy, right? <laughs> but it I looked mean, like page forty-two. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like page eighteen. Well, it's got the alternator from sixteen, and the yeah. amount of shit Mark uh, sold. I mean, he was brilliant, right? Yeah. But that shit was terrible. So I'm like, Glenn, we gotta, we gotta do something better here. So I des, I designed that on the, uh, you know, uh, MDF, you know, uh, router bandsaw, sure. 
miscellaneous pulleys. I put it all together, and then I brought that up to, and sat with his engineers over at Glenn's old shop in uh, um, in Burr Ridge, and sat with it for literally months, like arguing with his engineers, like, no, we got the pulleys have to match. You got to have the radiuses here, radiuses there, and that's what started the whole True Track thing. You know, yep. was that car, and that's become a monster for Glenn. You know, oh, I mean, sure. he's done a great job at it. Um, so we've done a lot of things, and then like the uh, the his um, race light, his wheels, the drag wheel stuff. I was building the damn uh, blowfish, and Don Bickle from uh, or Don Cross from Jerry Bickle Race Cars sent because I'm sending up a spindle mount wheel weld builds, and we just can't get them. See if Glenn would be interested. I brought it up to Glenn. I'm like, Glenn, you need to make these. Sat in his office for four years. You know, and finally he did it. Now it's like, I mean, they literally, I, I mean, Jeg's loan has a 700 piece standing order a month. Wow. You know, just that stuff. So, his so we've done some a four yeah. year turnaround time to, to get Glenn to do something. Yeah. 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 yeah no, yeah, we've, yeah. I finally, we two more years, I think. I finally, <laughs> I'll be yeah. there. I finally twisted his arm into doing these four by four wheels for us. We got about eight sets or something sitting here ready to mount up. But uh, I've been dragging ass a little bit getting projects done but once they're for all these legend trucks like yep. that square body out there but he built these bitching you know like take a factory square body cap and everything and they're they're kick-ass yep. I mean, that place is un yeah. believable he's maxed out you know and i went over we used to go to the tool show every year together and one we're up there drinking messing around and like two in the morning we pull in this building i'm like where the hell are we at i fell asleep and we're in this old rat i mean there's rats in there and i'm like it's like, yeah, I just bought this at where they're at now in the Grange yeah. area. I mean, it was a old lawnmower deck welding factory or some shit, you know. And man, he's filled it up. So they do a good job over there. And uh, but it's tough, you know, because it's like anything, you know. They got so much production going on. It, you know, it's like for yourself probably to jump in and do some one-off custom chassis and disrupt your whole flow. So yeah, it's tough. Um, it's uh, but is yeah. it uh, <laughs> for, for you? No, for no. you, yes. Not for yeah. me. No, for me, it's easy. Like, yeah, hey, I get that say, shit out yeah, of you. Do like, something trick. Like, yeah, we're tired we'll, of seeing that. We'll it's making it. money. Yeah, which, yeah. yeah. By the way, uh, that diamond T, we're going to be putting that into production. <laughs> so he wants set by like October uh, first. So it's this ready year, to roll. The heat's year. on, Josh. Yeah, no, it's dude. It's all design. We're ready to rock on it. So just kind of carve out a little window there, if you would, please. Yeah, the, <laughs> don't say I didn't tell you because. There's not much wood left to be carving on. Like it's we have <laughs> carved all the windows. Uh, all right, got it. And it got compared to the Cuda, you know, when they built that, when Bob built that car, and um, great car. Um, and you know, it was always like, oh, we got to get these two cars together and race them and all this shit, you know. And you know, Glenn, yeah, motherfucker, we'll go cross country and race it, you know, and da da da. So it was, it was, it was fun. But yeah, that was the. Uh, Dude, that Allen built was a that great car. would be a, a great battle in its day. Like, yep. Glenn talking shit versus Bob oh talking shit. Oh, my God. I mean, you <laughs> get be that. Mess, yeah, it? you get that Chicago that's be style <laughs> versus the <laughs> Southern pay style. Pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah pay-per-view. Yeah. Ladder match. Yeah, you'll, ladder hear, match. you'll hear words and, you know, <laughs> shit like you've never long. heard before. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you could string that. Oh, that yeah. A, so he's do- – oh, I see what you're saying. That's skill. He did have some diagrams. So – What's we've talked about all this different stuff that that has been going on. Um, what's where's the future headed? We obviously talked about your son really pumping, kicking the uh, social media's ass and really pumping that up. Yeah, that's the new thing, Jax. Uh, we've always talked about for years through you know Brizio and all these guys telling us to do it, which is you know probably the right thing we should have been doing. But um, we've developed a lot of stuff we use on all of them that we feel works and stuff. So we're going to start this Rad Rides performance parts and just kind of we're starting slow. I want to get a, enough stuff together so it looks professional, you know, and, and all that good stuff. So that's that's the next phase of uh, doing that. But we've always wanted to do it, but we're so busy. I want to build cars. So that's his baby. You know, my guys will, will have meetings and help, but all the legwork and figuring all that out and stuff. And, you know, it's going to be him. And uh, I think it'll be it'll be pretty good, I think. You know, a little bit of income on the side, but it'll it'll solve a lot of problems for people too, I think. And I don't know anything about that industry, you know, because after we do it once, I'm like, who the hell would want a, the second one? Yeah. Right? So <laughs> I'm not good at that part of it. So that's why we, we're leaning on a lot of people on the outside to help us and uh, all that. But we're actually building um, a couple pretty cool cars right now. Um, we've actually been working on a 49 uh, Olds Tin Woody for Rydell's son, Brian, that we started on about, oh, I don't know, six, seven years ago, I guess. And then... Wes wanted his car, so we built that car. 
We worked on it again. Then we built Wes another car. Does he, so Wes does just dad, tell, does dad, dad, Trump? dad yeah. rates. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Dad rates. So, <laughs> so we got the 41 done for Wes and Wes was like, Hey, we should do this. I'm like, Hey, can we, can we maybe sneak in Brian's car? At least try to get it to the body shop, you know? So, and it's cool. Cause it's twin turbo 427. Uh, a lot of cool shit. I mean, it's a neat, neat car. Um, it, cool. I'm really excited about it. It's going to look pretty simple on the outside, but it's, it's really something. And, uh, so we're working pretty hard on that. And then, uh, We've got a 36 Ford Roadster with that we're building, but with no fenders, which has been done once or twice terribly. Um, and George <laughs> yeah. is convinced. Yeah, as you said that, I'm picturing the yeah. few that I've seen. Yeah, George is convinced. Years, like, you can't do that. It look like shit. You know, you're dork. No, you know, so. Uh, you know, mini, mini Cooper or, uh, Mercedes. PT Cruiser headlights. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it, it's for Ross Myers that we built the Riddler car for back in 07. He's a 36 guy. And... Uh, nicest man you'd ever meet you got to see his collection sometime it's unbelievable a lot of vintage road race cars all champion cars they road race them um fantastic guy he's waited geez about four or five years for us to start on it so um but it's it's completely from scratch we he sent a the back half of a we he had a, a original 36 roadster still on the frame that he bought when he was 10 that he sent over to us. Shit. The one we built before the Riddler car he bought when he was eight for $25 because his dad was in the cars and he put it in the barn and he had it the whole time. And <laughs> that's how I met him. My dad met him at uh, uh, the 40th anniversary Mustang show and needed, he came in the booth. We had that eBay Mustang thing there we did and he was looking at it. My dad met him and helped him out with Roush and just started talking and he showed up at the shop and uh, we un unveiled Rogers 32. Yep. So he was, that's kind of his style. So, He's like, man, I really like that car. And he, and he sat down and talked to me. I've had this car since I was eight. I'm like, okay, we got the right guy, you know, and just a top shelf guy. Anyway, this one he's had since he was 10. So he sent it over and we looked at it and, and we made a few dies off of it for the Pomax is all. But we didn't touch it because we're going to change it so much. That car is still worth quite a bit of money in the sure. state that it yeah, was it's in. Yeah, just so. scratch build the fucker. Yeah, right? so we just yeah. did it. Yeah, <laughs> so and I'm telling you, you can get twenty five, thirty grand for what you it's can. Got. I know. Yeah. So. I love telling people that. I'm like, it, yeah, it's, that thing's worth twenty five grand. I'm like, where at? I said that that roadster there. You know, it's gone about a foot up. You know, yep. but they're crazy money. And uh, so we were at Seam about five years ago and had lunch with Ross, and he's like, hey, I want to. I'd really like to have an amber car. Uh, and we said, well, you know, what do you want? Thirty six and and like him and Adam almost looked at each other and said, why don't we just do it with no fenders? You know, and Adam's like, oh, I'm interested now. Hmm. And uh, it is, I'm telling you, hands down, going to be the best by far we've done. Really? Um, yeah. I'm looking forward it's to seeing right that. On. The cowl, uh, the grill, it's 100% from scratch. The, uh, the grill's about four and a half inches shorter. Uh, the cowl's moved back 10 inches. Um, and we just let the doors go back with it, so the quarters are a little shorter. The backs shorten up about nine inches and bobbed. You know, normally way, go way back and pick the fenders up. Yep. And uh, it is the proportions are just right on the money. I'm yeah. telling you, it is something. And it's the same tall wheel we ran on the Model A for Mariani. Sure. So it's got the real tall front tires, same deal. Um, uh, 312 Y block, um, kind of standard because he has a lot of 50s hot rod stuff so we're kind of like that kind of fits his collection we're trying to kind of we want to build something that when it's sitting at his place it looks like it's him too and uh it three twos on it and we took an old uh, vr57 blower put modern guts in it and we're blowing made the bonnet thing for it that looks like it probably would have bought in the 50s um blowing through it and uh automatic transmission behind it's it be wild. i'm it's telling like you it's upscaled 33 almost, yeah like yeah it, it kind of looks more a little bit like a 33 or two, it's bobbed and pushed shit. back and uh uh all torsion bar like we did the model a um but i'm uh, we just got uh, we just got on making the frame rails um how smooth is the alternator because that's really the most important <laughs> thing I'm about. The fuck, dude well, when, when you, you machine when, when you machine the case yeah, yeah. like yeah. we're on that nice. fucking good guys road tour uh whatever the years was when we stopped at your place right and uh, mariani's model a was in yeah there it was in bare metal yep. and I know that was just a fuck you to all of us that were on the tour. <laughs> because it's like, you fucking peasants. This is how it's done. Yeah. The, the little 1032 nut, you know, for that holds the uh, one little part on the side of those Power Master alternators. Like, the little 12-point nut? Yeah. 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 That was like that was like polished out, too. And then, like, everything. Like, that's a that's a fucking mock-up. 
It's a it's a mock up <clears throat> alternator. Well, this one we're gonna try. We're trying to get it done. Maybe to bring it to SEMA. Pretty much full roller. Um, hopefully we can. If not, Pomona. But we're gonna bring it around completely done. Seat frame. You know, we build all the seat frames down or two with tubing and springs and all that business. Um, because it, it's that's where it's at for me. Yes, that separates yeah, the men right. from the boys. And I'm telling you, the metal work is. I'm telling you, you could you could base the thing. Damn. And paint it. I'm telling you. It's that it's that good and but everything Moose is deburred to block. I mean, it looks like Moose a billet a steel he's block. He's a master that. It looks like a billet steel block. I'm How does he have you. fingers left? Oh, he could. I can't. Just down to like. This I gotta have a curtain because if I look over there, I want to blow my brains out. I mean, <laughs> but he's good at. It. I mean, there's you know there, you guys know there's smoothing shit out and there's getting shit straight. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. straight. So the whole car will be deburred, all the pieces, and we're making the uh, right now we we designed our own backing plate, drum cover, all that business, you know. Doing it's all one off, but you know it's just so we don't have to run Kent Mon or stuff you've seen, and uh, uh, it's we designed a whole pulley system with that because it's got two belts with that deal, and all the brackets look like they're probably cast, they're all swept, and I mean you guys would appreciate it for what went into that, um, but it's I'm telling you it's gonna be. Like, will that will, will that be on, like on par with the level of detail as like the first love? Yeah, or, yeah, but usable. That's the only car I ever built that wasn't. I mean, yeah, it drove and all yeah. that, but I mean, you'd have killed itself driving it. Yeah, it was silver. And we don't build that anymore. Um, and uh, 100% on that level of that. But the Mariani car, the Model A drove so well with that torsion bar stuff. I'm actually getting it back. Moose is out chasing Rydell on that uh, Good Guys tour, running up the coast on yep. the, out there. And uh, I think I'll have a spot on the way back because I want to pick it up and bring it back and. Because we never really got to give a lot of people a ride in that car. We put about a thousand miles on, and then he took it and then drove it to Canada. And he's had Mark's had it out there, and it is in the Model A. Yeah, because yeah. I made Mark give George a ride in it. Yeah, because like especially the steering. You know, we did all that side cow oh, shit. Well, when you look at it, like and, that was the first thing that jumped out to yeah. me. I'm like, you know, cow steering is super cool, but the geometry it's garbage. It's yeah. Poor, like yeah. A- anybody that says it worked, it does not no. work. It will never work. Yep. It's the most awful bump steering Terrible. suspension setup you can ever experience in your life yep so and that's that was just like that was the fucking thing. guy like that was you, the again, thing right like, there where like we called it was the best called gary schroeder and i always lean on guys that you know like when i went to bonneville first guys i called was jerry kugel because they went 300 in there he's one of the only other builders that had success out there went 300 in that firebird like Jack Chisnold went, you know, 250 in his Studebaker. So I called them two guys, got a little bit of information. And, you know, and you sift through it. You take some of it, and then you don't use some of it, whatever. But you yep. call the guys. I don't – it looks like you reinvent the wheel all the time, but we don't. And uh, so the the side steering, we called Schroeder because I was just going to get a Schroeder box. And he's like – Lawrence called him, my machinist. And and he's he's the brilliance behind all that. I mean, he's, he's the one that designs – I mean – we may have this idea, but he's the one that designs it all and proofs sure. it out. And I mean, the shit works, period. Everything we've ever done, like the oil pan, girdle, and pan we just did, I mean, it looks cool, but I mean, there's massive measuring and like oh, science yeah. in there because we that girdle's pressurized and we have oil squirters built into it because there's no water in the bottom of the block, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Gary Schroeder says, Well, you know, this guy on a trailer? <laughs> Lawrence goes, What do you mean? He goes, because if you do it like all these other dumb son of a bitches, you can't drive them. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that was oh, the yeah. first shit he told him. It was aw- in Schroeder. It was awesome, right? So, so then we took. Then I think I talked to Mole a little bit, Steve, and uh, a few other guys. So we kind of took in the information, and then it ended up looking really cool. And people thought, oh, it just yeah, it looks cool. Yep. But I'm telling you. And then we ran a power steering box. Was a thing a lot of people don't know. It's a power. <laughs> it's a KSE power box under the dash yeah. so we did that for the uh hydraulic dampening that okay. was the only reason we did it i mean it has the assist but yep. more to dampen the field and i'm telling you you could jump the road tracks at 60 mile an hour net with a indicator on the wheel and it won't move damn it's i'm telling you it's awesome when you science it out and it really works yeah right i'm oh, like, cool i made mariani bring george for a ride and grab the steering wheel yeah i'm like great you bring him for a ride and you make him grab the steering wheel at 80 mile an hour in that thing dude it was it's so rad seeing it because i've we've done cowl steer cars and you know they're a struggle and i've got i'm a model a guy like i love yep. model a's i've got one that it's been sitting on the back burner i want to build it for myself forever and i wanted it to be cowl steer but i know like you know we build chassis for a living that's our yep. business so I, i'm not going to put something out there that's a bum yeah. steering fucking nightmare yep. and i'm like well, that's that's the way to fucking 
fix it because you know you need to have those pivots in line. I'm like, yep. how can I put that inside the cowl so Troy doesn't know that? <laughs> like, <laughs> if you I can move it, yeah. If yeah, I can, if I can move yeah, it all can. inside the cowl and just you know send the drag link out there. We made that rocker know? arm piece, and I mean, Lauren specs out all the bearings. Like, ah, I mean, I got like a thousand <laughs> side plane or something. Like, are you crazy? I mean, that shit is so precision. I'm telling you, he's a he's really a brilliant. And he's got the right style, too. I mean, like, we'll talk about something, and then uh, Adam will sketch it, and then we'll sit with Lawrence, and then he makes it real. But uh, it's a good combination there of making shit really, really work. And that thing is, I mean, it drives so good. I just want guys like yourselves that have, you know, I rode in with Posey on a power tour a long time ago, oh, yeah. and I'm telling you, I thought I was going to get killed. And I was driving oh, yeah. a car, and he passed me one of the cars, and I'm telling you, I look, I look over, and it oh, is it's... this high off the ground, and he's just... He's in there steering it like he's on a dirt track. Yeah, you know? yeah. When you get like a sixteen-inch wheel, I mean, yeah. it is—it's like half a half a oh, steering wheel terrible. rotation when you hit like a any you know imperfection right. in the road. It's so that's uh, something. I want to get that, and I'll come up so you can drive it because you'd really appreciate it. And the torsion bar stuff is yeah, that's, oh my that's god, rad. and hey, it works so well. So I, taking that and tweaking a little bit for this thirty-six, I just know how well it's going to drive. It's going to be just dynamite. And uh, that's cool. So that's the. That's the fun challenge of it. And, like, that had that little tilt column we made in it with the little detent on it, real small, you know, and nobody's really doing that right. So we're going to yep. – we're making a new version of that that will sell, you know, that's real tiny bell with a little tilt. It has a little sure. – it's going to have a little wheel in there with a little pod on the side so it actually has a turn signal thing that has a timer canceller and that kind of stuff. But nice. um, So we're trying to think a little smarter as we're doing some of the stuff like we did in the past. We're like, yeah, it was real cool, but, like, yeah, whatever, that's old. Tilt, tilt is a big deal. <laughs> well, get, oh, for get, this you've never day. been in the car with Josh. He's, <laughs> is he like he this? will wear out the no. tilt yeah. on a 2022 <laughs> vehicle? What the fuck you think they put it there for? It's for I don't know because I've egress. never used it. So they don't ever I, use their tilt. I use it every single time I come. Well, I mean, New Trek does it all automatically, yeah, but yeah. I mean, dude, it was that's yeah. just the way it is. You pull that thing down yeah, in your lap to drive, and when you're getting out, you flip that thing up. Yeah. Ian, am I right? In this industry, you no, should he's, understand mechanical he's from, limits. He's from yeah, the Midwest. You just dude. grab that, and it just, you hear it, <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. vibrates off, and you grab it, bring it down, you hear gears stripping. Yeah. Well, and, you guys deal with all these aftermarket columns. They're not tight. Yep. You can't, I don't yeah. care what, you can't get the detent tight. You know, Every time we try to jack something else up, you can always have that movement. And just like, there again, that's, that, that's your first point of feel of the car. This is how big, to me... How is the, how is big wheel. is the diameter grip on a steering, right? Because of what wheel you're using. That's yep. why we make all our own and blah, blah, blah. But that's important. And then what's it feeling like? Yep. You know, that's... Uh, yeah, isolating the steering column is tough. Key. That's why when we do like, you know, 59, 60 Chevys, 57 Bel Airs, the, the wheel, the column and wheel is so like cantilevered yep. out from the mount that... Yep. You, know, you hit a bump and Movement. you you, know, yep. you feel them, and it instantly, regardless of how nice you build the car, how good you make it ride, that is it's your first feedback. experience. Yeah. So, we always go to great lengths to you know short. I'll cut down the fifty-seven cluster and stuff yeah, the stuff column down in it and isolate the column. And it, there's a lot. Yep. And then the feedback with these racks, you know, and and you know these vibration joints, they're just too small and tight. We run a I run a rag joint and everything now, even on the racks on every one of them. Yeah. And now you get zero. You get zero feel in the wheel i'm not granted if you had some mic on it maybe it's a little got a tick in there but right. the feedback is zero um so just all that kind of jazz but uh um but it's uh you know we're trying to get better each time and then we're actually we got a pretty another neat one on the back burner uh for matt jewel the guy we did a flathead bonneville car for he's he's the real deal he's over in davenport he's got a 180 man machine shop over there they do a lot of stuff for like john deere cat bobcat sure um Sprint car racer his whole life, uh, Bonneville racer. He came to us when we built this flathead for him three years ago and had raced out there four years in a row. Everybody wants to have the fastest flathead gas roadster. It's his, like close to something you drive on the street, we'll say. And he's trying, trying, trying. Four years in a row, was 20 mile an hour off, four different engines. So he came to us to like even build a different car. He's seen us out there and well, like his car was pretty nice that he had. So we built the flathead in 11 months, designed the cylinder heads, combustion chamber, blah, 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 and went out there, got lucky, set the record right away, and yeah. now we did a second version of it. But that's a serious, I mean, if you don't have the cam swap, building the heads from scratch, all that nonsense, you're not even in a conversation. And it's a lot of damn money because, you know, there's 
40 setups in the block. You know, we're moving the valve seats, we're moving the lifter bores, because you have to run a stock of 40, 53, you know, block with the valves in it. That's the only rule. So it's a, it's a lot of effort, but it's really, re it's almost as rewarding to get that 165 mile hour record as oh, 300, because sure. you're handcuffed with it, mechanical yeah. injected. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a neat class. But anyway, he's got a 39 Hudson truck that we bought. Um, kind of a, interesting looking yeah no, but we're going to do our version of we'll say i always say it's like a retarded 44 yes yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's a five head it's a five head it's got water on the head i don't think you can say that uh, yeah no i just did i, just, <laughs> I, just, I love them goofy yeah. fuckers trust me uh I, <laughs> But uh, that was dad's uh, uh, <laughs> truck that he always wanted to build. Oh, uh, yeah, he had His horrible taste <laughs> in cars. What do you think of that? Well, he'll uh, love this one. Yeah, now. <laughs> we're gonna do it like a little, like a little sprint truck, kind of like we'll say the mo model A feel yeah. that we did. Uh, cut the cab up obviously a lot, you know, make the bed and all torsion bar, and then it's got a 1936 V12 Cadillac for an engine, twin turbo. Yeah. Two little always, turbos on it. Always been a fan of yeah. this. So it's going to be really, you're not going to see that kind of. What do you do about the whole front end part? Though? Uh, a lot of hacking and chapping, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it'll be torsion bar, blah, blah, blah. But it'll it'll just have that look from a distance. Like, I, we'll get, I think we'll get it right where you'll yeah, be like, oh, I'm that's sure you cool, will. right? Yeah. And then the open hood will just be like, oh, yeah. Now we're, there ain't no LS in that baby, that's, right? That's badass. You know, so that's, that's the fun part of that. So that one's uh, waiting. We haven't got a start on it yet. So it's just like, it's just, you know, it is. It's just. You run out of days, man. It's yep. just unbelievable. And then when you're building them, you know, from scratch, it just takes forever. But and how about the Camaro? You get that? Yeah, we finally got it to the body shop. Yeah. Joe's been a great guy. I mean, I've had that thing there for 15 years, probably. Yeah. The first three years, I tried to talk him out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, come on, let's dude, that's do something a, else, Like, it's man. funny you see the car pop back up and it, that, that you guys are back on it, and it yeah. just shows how fucking ahead. Of, like, those cars are just yeah, now we, getting popular. We got lucky and there. You were doing yeah. that 15 years. Yeah, we ago. got lucky there because it. And it's so radically styled, you know, I'm like, that was like, okay, if we're going to do it, we got to do it. Like, okay, maybe if that was the IMSA road race look of that car, that sure. period. Um, and I always say it's not for everybody, you know, but if you like fabrication, you'll like looking at it. Cause I mean, we try to, you know, as you, we try to make everything, but make it look like we didn't touch anything. Yep. That's kind of the exact, that's like in your face a lot, that car, which isn't really what we do. So we're going to try to, we'll say tone it down the way it's painted and things like that, but uh, Joe's been a great guy. He's been a, a GM engineer for 40 years uh, at GM, like an That's advanced cool. engineering, like laser welding and all that kind of stuff. He bought the car new, put about 3,500 miles on Shit. it, then started changing engines and playing with it and blah, blah, blah. And and uh, and uh, he's had a little bout, some health problems here lately. So I'm like, like we'd work on it, build four cars, and then work on it, you know, because he, he wants it like over the top. But, you know, he doesn't have throwaway expendable money, sure. you know. Um, so it takes a little longer. But uh, he's fantastic to work with because he's an engineer. You know, you send him a picture. He's oh, got yeah. it on an 80-inch monitor just looking at every little detail, and he's so excited about it. So yep. so we're finally making an honest attempt. We've got the fabrication done, and uh, it's at the body shop now. So I really cool. I really want to get it out. And luckily, because of the, those are just now coming into play, it, you know, we didn't miss the window you know, so well, that, that, that's a testament to what you do because car's been in the works for 15 years and you'll still probably be the first guy yeah. to well, debut. It, it'll be the most wide, it'll be the most radicalist one for sure. And it's, yeah. and it's legit. It's twin turbo 480, all the junk we normally do. I mean, it, and it's all MoTeC and then and we made the cockpit twist. So it's like you're driving and yes, there's a seat over there, but that's just for the rider. Yeah. You know, it's cockpit styled like an IMSA car and that's you know, cool. the cage is all, trapezoidal and you know blah blah blah, blah, blah. Sick. you, you know so you're gonna machine the mullet or is it gonna be hand fabric? <laughs> it'll, it'll be part of the seat. helmet it's part of the helmet it's <laughs> <laughs> but for everybody listening just so if you're wondering how far behind troy you are the answer is 15 years yeah that's yeah at least. that's it See, right yeah there. right yeah 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 we get a lot of calls you know it is it's like gosh darn it and so we've tried to narrow it down in the last few years to we do so much stuff for like wes uh the big cars you see, but we do a lot of wheels and radiators because we make our own radiators. I get the CNR core. We machine the tanks. I weld them together, that kind of stuff. So we do a lot of that parts stuff for them also. So um, it just we kind of worked, narrowed it down to just a three, four customers on the big side yeah. because we that's can't cool. do it. I mean, and I only <laughs> want, if it's up to me, we'd have one in the back shop in our big fab shop, and that's it. But sure. we, we have 
basically two and a half um, because I, if it's in there, I want to work on it. I don't want to walk by it, yep. you know, and, and uh, we've, that, that's been a better thing for us. And we've got, luckily got the customers that, you know, that if you can put everybody on in the shop, they're happy, you yep. know, because now we can get that one done and start the next one. So, uh, and, you know, technology, you know, we got the laser scanners and the printers and the CNCs, you know, like a lot of guys do. Sure. And it's helped us uh, be a little fast, you know, a little faster so you can get on, start on the next one. But it's tough. They're just never ending. It seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. And then you throw Bonneville in for at least three, four months out of the year that's dedicated just to that between the streamliner, yep. the blowfish, the flathead, oh, yeah, and, and the 34 Roadster. Every time I see those cars pop up, I get anxiety over yeah, it. I'm like, not only is work. it, yeah, it, not only is it like, forget about building the car, the prep it work is, yeah. and getting and getting everything ready to roll. I'm you got to like, touch everything. You got to, yeah. we do it. At, I try to do the assembly at the last minute because then you're, you're, we're novice. So, you know, you're, you, the thing sits there for nine months. And you walk by it all the time, but now you're touching everything again and kind of getting the, thought process going and you know all that business and then the worst industry in the world is high performance parts like crankshafts and pistons for that stuff i mean it's always the last minute you know and uh so we just got the pistons friday so we're getting the engine assembled and Damn. and then we'll try to run them on the chassis dyno hopefully this weekend both of them and get them you know fairly ready but it's uh it's fun it's helped us a lot i mean that the blowfish might be one of the top cars we've done just because it it you know we've been racing it for 15 years and it's kind of really iconic car, gold, yep. blah, 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 whatever, and it's had some success and whatever. But I keep saying uh, every year we're going to get out there. I've never oh, been. you got I to. Wanna, I want to yeah. go. That's the real deal. I mean, that's the. It's coming up, right? Yeah. End of um, August? Uh, fourth, no, the actual 6th uh, six, six through the 12th or whatever is the first event. Then they have one in September and then one at the end of September. So there's three events. And I, I used to work on a speed <clears throat> demon a lot, but you know, I just don't have the time now. Um, we built wheels and some suspension parts and we paint and body and all that stuff on a speed demon but we just kind of help from the outside on that one yeah full plate how, with all the stuff you've got going on and as long as you've been doing it how do you maintain the drive and the passion you know it's uh it's like you guys i mean we you try to do something cool and you get the satisfaction from it i mean that's the key Having the right customers has made it easier to be passionate about it. You know, I mean, sure. a lot. You know, like Roger, I kind of forgot him. You know, the thirty-two we built in the Chrysler and everything. Great customer. So who picked um, that color? Which one? The uh, Chrysler. I did. Uh, we built it for his wife, okay. uh, so it's kind of modeled for her a little I didn't say more. It was a bad yeah, thing. no, just... no, no. We modeled it more towards a lady feel, and they had the bird cloth interior and all that nonsense. But um, it's a. Uh, you know, I'm excited to do it now that like Jack's around and we're going to do the parts thing. So that's kind of exciting. But um, the challenge of building the cars is still there because we keep pushing ourselves. And I'm more on the mechanical challenge than the aesthetic challenge myself. Sure. Um, so that making these odd combinations work and um, and everything. I don't know. Like I said, I'm still there if I'm not at a ball game. His brother plays Division One baseball. So if I'm not at a ball game and I'm home, I'm there on Sunday messing around. Because you want to be now, you know, it's you got the overheads low, you know, been doing it sure. long enough and been in the same spot. So it's, it's, you're not trapped by that mess, yep. you know, so it, it makes it a little more easy to think about things. But, um, and then having the guys, my guys are fantastic, you know, that's, they're excited, you know. That would be my question. How to keep yeah. the rest of the team motivated <laughs> yeah. on the same page to they're, be building. You include them a lot, you know, because we're so, you know, like I said, there's only nine of us. So, you're on you're around each other a lot tighter and everybody's in the loop all the time so they're excited about it and, and i always made a point maybe later these last 10 years at least for sure to include my guys with the customer so like yeah. i could be at a ball game it don't matter they don't need to call me they can call adam or casey or lawrence and they have a relationship with them and anything they say is what i would say so I kind of learned that from Boyd. Boyd tried to do it all a little bit and hurt him, I think. Um, trying to just manage the whole thing himself. It drove him crazy. So I give them guys a lot more freedom to interact with the customer. It makes it a lot more fun. And then they're more involved in, um, in everything. And uh, just, I don't know. I don't know what the right recipe is, but it, it works okay. It's, it cool. seems, to be, seems to be working out just, just fine. 
if uh, maybe if you slow down a little bit, everybody else will have a, <laughs> a little chance. Get everybody's <laughs> caught us. That's the problem. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the one thing is just don't look at the internet. You know, then you don't build the same thing everybody else is. That's the double edged sword with that. I yeah. mean, it's necessary, right? You learn from it, and there's a lot more information out there. But goddamn it, if you get caught on there too much, you know, that you sort of show up at Columbus for a street machine, and it's like. It's kind of the same version done to every car a little bit, you know. And that's no different than back in the early days of street machining. It's all these pastel shit and, <clears throat> you know, whatever the trends are. So it's tough with so much good stuff coming out of small shops to stand out anymore. So Right. Um, I think the industry appreciates <clears throat> you not posting stuff so we don't copy what you're doing. I think <laughs> that's been, been well, key. The problem is, is that you fucking can't. It's, that's the thing. It's no, like, anybody can't. He, he brings it to such a level. I mean, I, I got to thank you because you're the reason, I think, for for our success in both areas. Like, you pushed me to try to build the best car that we could build, but I couldn't do it to your level. So then I'm like, fuck this. Let's just build survivor cars that will work, <laughs> like, real, yeah. will work really good. Yeah. And I'm going to push to make those, like, be the best they can be. Because, you know, if you're not going to be the best in one area, I want to, like, at least, you know, flourish in another. Yeah, you guys so. have... <laughs> killed it from day one and i mean your dad's proud of what you guys have done trust me it's uh that where you guys have elevated i'm telling you man you guys came on and i mean it was like a shit storm wide open Thank and, you, and where you've become i mean it's in i mean you sit at them sema banquets and they got all them display cars in there it's like uh uh so and so roadster shop chassis roadster shop chassis road shop <laughs> chassis and you guys have done a great job and and um you know like we had the roadster shop your chassis under agnes you know which was 40,000 mile car, you know, and uh, it's a great piece. And like I've, I've used art stuff for a long time, and it's just because I was loyal to art. Yep. I mean, I bought my first set of wheel tubs in 1986 from art and put them sure. together in my bedroom, you know, and it, as a pro street guy. So, uh, you know, and he's had some tough role out there, and, yep. you know, and he's turning that business over to his one of his longtime employees. So, um, you know, I hope they do good. But obviously, mm -hmm. You know, we need to work together more because we're so close. Yeah. You know, it's stupid. Now, it's almost like Glenn when I was running Boyd Wheels. You know, it's like, right. it's just ignorant, you know, yeah. and, and things like that. So it's, uh, I mean, one of the favorite things you guys did was the, uh, that I liked was the trophy truck thing. Yeah. That was sick, man. I'm Thank telling you. That was fucking bad. Yeah. I mean, everything's badass. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But I mean, <laughs> when, you know, when you can, I felt most proud about our shop is like, uh, when they used to do Hot Rod Top 10, we got Hot Rod Magazine Car of the Year in 07 with the Blowfish. And also in that Top 10 was the Riddler car. I mean, you couldn't have two opposite yeah, two more uh, different yeah. cars built by the same group right. of guys. So that shows a diversi diversification, which there's very few shops doing that. Like Briz is good at the 32s. You want to drive oh, yeah. where he's the best at it, right? That's great. You know, Bobby's got his look and so on and so on. But Where was he, the Camry at? <laughs> that was a yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey i was at least built we built hey. you up for fucking two hey. hours so yeah, i'm gonna knock him right down where, where i was smart though i always got paid for that shit yeah. it was never that well, dollar car shit with me because i i didn't i didn't have time to do it so right. if i got i did most of them things uh like i did the high, the hemi truck was with hot rod and chrysler i did them um, the Toyota stuff was through Hot Rod with Lexus. Actually, I did. Uh, we did the Avalon and the Camry both. So those were all. I got paid to do them, so that was good. But yeah, in uh, uh, yeah, that was some. What was the shit. What was the one? It was a Chrysler that said Flex Fuel. What, yeah, that was you? that was my dad. Uh, that was just a Charger that we did, and yeah. just a street driver thing. But my dad, we actually developed the standalone E85 kit, yep. um, and got it passed through the epa went through all the sniff sheds at roush i mean it was a big effort it was a standalone you could put on in a car for to run e85 and it just it never panned out because of the e85 never took hold enough and stuff so and we actually were going to put it on all the post office jeeps that yeah. was the last ditch effort like because they're trying to you know get them more or whatever burning hey, cleaner I, shit. I, and, I remember i saw that car on i-90 yeah. one time i'm coming home i was a I mean, it was probably wherever it went after you had it. Yeah. Yeah, the guys I, I were from know. up north. That was part of this Flex Fuel group okay. thing my dad so, was involved um, in. 
We were hung, driving our charger, hung, right? Well, hungover as a motherfucker. I was out, <laughs> like, hanging out with a buddy that night. I get up early in the morning. I'm just, like, white as a ghost, sweating fucking profusely, <laughs> trying to keep the car between them. I'm like, holy fuck, that's... That's the car Troy did. And I'm, yeah. and I'm <laughs> green and yellow. <laughs> Look like a corn cob, so it's yeah, easy like, to see well, coming. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That the kit really worked well. I mean, there's a lot of work, but it just wasn't the right time. Not enough money behind it either. But it it what it did and we're able to run like flex fuel sensors shit ten years ago and all of our stuff that we were digital fuel injected and we could run a mix, whatever, and it would adjust for it. So we learned that from it, but you know, just one of them things. That was my dad's venture yeah. that he was doing with a guy, and unfortunately, it didn't really pan out that well. Was there a forklift involved in it anywhere? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> big time. Yeah, he, he, was, yeah. he was abused the forklift too. Like, well, you know, we got a, we have old men. We always fuck around with Jesse because his dad, you know, Jeff, he's greening. Oh yeah, yeah. Jeff, Jeff greening. Our dad, like these fuck the shit they would do on forklifts. The, oh. the old man stuff. No. That, <laughs> well, Moose told a couple stories. My old man was a classic. A oh, and... dude, four gut, or like uh, four post rack, backing up, hooked to mirror, and like son of a bitch, and then just floor it and rip the thing right off the door. I mean, <laughs> he pulled guns. We had a truck test lane in our front building because uh, we had a safety test lane back when my dad had to shop, and it had like a ramp you pull up, like a skid pad in the building. And it kind of stood up in the air and had bolts and shit. And he pulled Glenn's 32 that Brizio built that green one in one time at oh, a yeah. big 500 inch Ford. I mean, just opened the oil pan like a zipper. <laughs> <laughs> just dumped all out of it. So, yeah, he was uh, he was hard on equipment. I mean, I'll never forget. I was building that hot rod uh, Hemi truck, um, and I I look out. My old man's in the fucking dumpster. I'm like, what are you? Or first of all, I said, where's that check? You know, fucking hot rods dragging us out here or what? You know. He's like, oh, they sent it, and this and that. And I'm like, well, call them fuckers up, you know. And next thing you know, he's out in a dumpster. And he comes in with a check all crumpled up. You know, <laughs> threw it away. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, I'm telling you, man, it was, <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> priceless. But we had a lot of, a lot of great opportunities in the early days. I mean, we unveiled the Sniper at the 50th anniversary of Howard Magazine. They inducted the first 50 guys into the Howard Hall of Fame, like Mario Andretti, John Forrest. I mean, at the Hilton, we unveiled the sniper there. I mean, it was cool. prime time. I mean, we've had some pretty good time slots over the years, and uh, it kind of helped, I guess, propel stuff, whatever. I feel like the industry is missing that now. Like, all the you know older guys we talked to that, you know, you had Bobby flying up and working with all these different guys and hanging out at Boyd's shop and talking with Jesse, and he's bouncing around to all different shops. Like, I don't, it doesn't really seem to happen anymore. No. I don't know if it's... I, everybody I says that. I... I I tend to agree with you, but unless we're gonna, we don't all. We nobody knows that it's the good old days until it's past. You know, right. you're not looking at all the fun that you know that people are that we are having and people are having nowadays. And in 15 years, you're gonna look back and be like, oh man, we did this, we did that. I hope. I think part of it's everybody's with the social media again is so caught up on wanting to be the man and who's getting the credit and all this shit. And I'm like, if you're doing a good job, everybody's busy. And I mean, look how many customers we all share. I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know we, uh, George, Randy. I mean, there's probably other ones. That, yeah. I mean, there's we all there's a yeah, certain a, group that we share all the customers anyway. Right. I mean, yeah, what's the difference? It's, it's, you it's, build, it's, you guys build, we build, we build. It's, it's not. It's not a competition. Cares. Like I said, it's a matter of opinion. I mean, none of us can build it all anyway. No hell Doesn't no. Matter. No no. So that that I think is a little. You know, people don't realize that that we all share. Like when me and Chip in the early days when I was subbing my. Um, Charlie would come help, or Jim Griffin would come help. We were using the same guys. Me and him were using the exact same guys, that, you know, to do the cars. So they kind of had that same, maybe I don't know, feel or at least the quality level. I don't know, but um, I don't know. It's it. People need to work together a little bit more and not worry about who's getting the got the credit. Because you know, you go to the bank and say, "I'm pretty fucking cool." That doesn't make your house payment. That's the way I see it, right? <laughs> we've, we've brought you know, several trophies and tried to cash them in. Yeah, <laughs> they don't, they don't yeah. right? Those, huh? No, it is. It's yeah. it just you, you gotta you, you get past that as you get older too. You know, it's uh, you know, you kind of forget about that. You know, and I think some of these guys and there's so many guys doing a good job, and I don't know them. I mean, people in our drives like Columbus. I was looking at this car's trick. You know, and I'm like, man, this is a really nice guy. Come up and introduce himself, and I didn't know who he was. Yeah, and I'm sure he's done a good job, but I just don't oh, follow yeah. anybody. Dude, you really? I mean, that's that's one thing you just don't know. Like, we constantly have chassis customers picking up chassis, and 
the sales guys periodically, you know, tour guys through the shop and we don't meet them all. So you never know because like, and you probably don't know what, when we got started in like, I want to say it was probably 2002, me and Chad came through your shop. You were building the, uh, Roadster at the time, the okay. 32 yep. and Levi's over there building fr- like the frame rail kickups in the back. Yep. And I'm like, Holy fuck. Like at the time, all I was doing was just building frame rails, like for yeah. fucking chassis, yep. doing nothing on cars, nothing cool. And I'm like, holy fuck. Like this is, <laughs> right. this is insane. Like what, I mean, just, it was so inspirational. And then shortly after that, we flew out to California, we hooked up with Tim Foss and he sent us on like all kinds of tours. We went through Boyd's shop, went through Limeworks and all kinds of like, you know, SoCal and you know met Jimmy Shine and yep. all these and Jimmy Shine probably has no fucking idea but you know you never know like there could be the guy That's that through. that came through the shop that yeah. 10 15 years from now is like dude I came through the Roadster shop and yeah. like my saw t- this inspired you and saw that, that. you're old yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah which is rare that That's Josh just a diversion that. that's a diversion for I'm Josh always the oldest yeah. one so yeah. I got to be right. yeah, I got to go to throw it you know, I was going to say for we brought that orange Chevelle out to uh, Good Guys Indy. That yeah. had to be oh, it was, it was two thousand and six. Okay, I was pretty close on that. Yeah, one. and again, not to just keep you know swinging off your nuts. Yeah, we're here, just bag but... talking over here. <laughs> <laughs> All night. Still, like one of the few hot rod moments that just like stuck with me yeah. forever. Like me and him were standing there. We're we're sweating. Like we're trying to win a what was it Boyd's uh, pros pick. Pros pick. Yep. And like you came up and walked over and you're like, man, things pretty badass. I like what you did, like the color, like the stripe. And we were just like in awe. We're like, oh, fuck. Troy like checked us out. And like, yeah. it, well, that meant so much to us that just like you recognize what we did and took the time to, to come up and say that. Dude, and I've got a lot at the time you were selecting. I was picking the builder's choice because yep. interesting story. You look downstairs when you walk in the door, you'll see, all kinds of trophies. I don't even know what the fuck they're for. You know, builder's choice, builder's choice, you know, all these various things. The one and only trophy that I have at home that sits on my shelf is that trophy. I appreciate it. That is it, dude. I mean, <laughs> honest to God. I mean, I don't even, we've got like trendsetters and yeah. how many fucking Riddlers. Josh lets me know that. And Jesse, Uh-oh. Jesse lets me know that all the time, but <laughs> I don't mother shine. Yeah. Mother another, shine. Yeah. Josh lets another, me know. More he, matters he, of he, opinion. he tells me all the time. He's like, you know, they don't just fucking give those out to anybody. You know, cause he, <laughs> he won one in, in the past, but that's the one and only trophy that I was like, this one actually, it really means something. I appreciate I think it's it. Cool and it's hell. tough. Cause I mean, I've, I've got, we put a little trophy thing up that I had all this stuff in the attic, literally. And from 25, 30 years ago. And, my wife and sister's like, oh, we should put some of this up. So they grabbed them all down. And there's some, you know, it's fun to, I got a Posey from Americruise. I, was, yeah. I just wanted it so bad when I won it. I had my Rambler wagon and stuff like that that really makes a difference. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, and, and it's nice when you're making it. It really, because you get caught up making it. I'm like, oh, fuck, fuck, we did that again. Yeah. You know, and it's like, Jesus Christ. We did that award for my dad at the Chicago show, and hell, I got fucking 15 grand in it, you know, by the time it's done. But it, it's cool because we're giving it to people, not necessarily cars. Yep. So that's fun stuff. But uh, funny funny thing with the shine thing, we were, uh, Jack was at SEMA the one year, and we're sitting there, and I, I don't know, I don't even know if we had a car involved. We might, no, I think we did. I mean, I don't know if it was a Torino or what, but he was younger, and, and we won the thing with the Torino or something. I don't know. And, and the, he's seen the trophy. He's like, that's what those are. We had like four or five of them at the shop. <laughs> They're sitting around like for door stops and shit, you know, but it's there again, matter of opinion, yeah. whatever, you know, who cares. But yeah, it's, uh, it's good. You know, we, we don't, we still compete a little bit, but we don't do it for that anymore. The only yeah. time I compete is when you get somebody that's just arrogant, you know, and they're like, think their shit's the baddest. That's the only time I want to win. Yeah. You just want to just, you know, slap them with a bag of dicks, you know. <laughs> So once in a while, it's rewarding. I think George had the best quote on that ever. That absolutely, I, I don't care much for winning, but fuck, I don't want to lose. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no shit. Yeah. I don't care about winning, but I hate to lose. Yeah, yeah. that's old. I feel George. like we should have done the whole fanboy thing at the beginning. Like coming back, it's like, yeah, hey, know. Troy, remember, remember that? Remember time? that one time? Like <laughs> yeah, I got that award. That was, that was, that was well, that was, that was so yeah. cool, dude. That was like <laughs> boy, though, man. I'm telling you, I was like, oh yeah, this guy's paying attention to me. And I mean, when his sister was born. He sent me a five hundred dollars savings bond, all this food. I mean, it was pretty cool because I because wow. I think back, thinking like, 
I try to do nice things like that, but you're busy and you're like, ah, yeah. shit, I missed that or whatever, you know. And it really meant a lot to me at the time, and uh, and for them to take me under the wing, I just I I got in at the right time at the end of those guys, Jack Chisnell and all them guys, and Lobeck and Posey and Boyd, and uh, it really gave me some credibility early. Well, you know? I think you've I think you've done a great job. I mean, we've already talked about the quality and and the work that you've put out, but as far as being a person too, I mean. You don't ever hear, uh, oh, man, Troy, I mean, he was a dick or he didn't do this. You, you've spent the time. And I know you and Adam do it all the time at shows. And you'll go around and look at those cars. You'll take the time. You'll talk to people. Um, you did it with me. With, we had a truck out there for Amber. I mean, yep. done it with it with us. And it's uh, it does mean a lot. So if you're worried about if you're trying to do that, yeah. that you, you are giving back. Well, you try, you know, and it's like what I art. This industry, I've come up with this saying, too. It's like nothing we're doing is necessary, obviously. Right. right? It's a hobby. So it's pretty awesome. Are yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. We ain't saving nobody's it's life here, right? Man. So it's awesome. Yeah, it is essential. But we lost uh, that yeah. battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Right. CD to be down by us. We didn't even have fucking COVID down there. Um, it's uh, it's awesome that we get to do it because it ain't necessary, right? So it's yep. pretty cool. You know, that's uh, that's you know, that's kind of where I'm at with it. We have reached the point now. We ask some of the standard questions that we ask every single guest i'm kind of excited to see what uh what troy has but if you could go back in time and give yourself a piece of advice when would it be and what would it be oh probably what everybody told me you know uh make and sell parts while you're doing it because we've done really well you know um we've got you know a good life do what we want you know got some money but it's not manufacturing you know i mean that's just the way it is because you're selling labor so i wish i'd have probably started that earlier but you know like jeremy said we're we we've got the footprint out there pretty good so hopefully now that we're doing it it'll work work faster right because yeah. we've been doing it so long um and hopefully we'll want a little bit of something on what we're doing you know so i guess that's that's the biggest thing um i probably could have been a lot further like i said along in this whole thing maybe i don't know how but uh it was more important to me to spend time at the sporting events so I don't know if you're going to be able to sell any alternators at the price you're going to have to charge if Moose is involved. <laughs> but I was going to go somewhere. Boy, they're slick, though. <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah, damn. I, a piece of advice uh, for your son here, because um, I've had a deal with trying to take all the shit that he dreams here, up here we and go. turn it into a <laughs> production piece that we can sell and actually make money. Yeah. Um, I don't know how the fuck you're going to do it, but <laughs> good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Adam always said we're going to sell uh, tens of those, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, tens. Yeah. We're going to sell te ones and tens of those, you know? Uh, what's the greatest piece of advice that you've ever received? Well, a little, one of the, well, it's, we'll say it's a two-parter. So the first part was my grandpa's telling me every goddamn day that there's only one, one way to do things the right way. Every fucking day. And then he also said, if you think you know it all, you don't know nothing. That was really big in the beginning and like we all were you know i didn't start listening until i was probably 21 and uh and then later in life not well, a little later i guess once i got into it george told me when i kind of first met him he said let your actions speak louder than your words and that's a monster in today's society right because yep. everybody's talking the game and ain't delivering because you can reach so many people yep. so that was uh, uh my grandpa brainwashed me early i mean like to me, first thing I tell somebody it's start starting, I'm like, and I mean it, and they look at me like I'm nuts. I'm like sweeping the floor is as important to me as you painting that car. It's yep. the same thing, right? Do it right. When you're done, step back and look at it. And how can you change something? So because if you if you do that that way, you're gonna do this. You this do, way. and then when you start looking at things that way, it, the stuff just turns out like it does. It yep. ain't doesn't take any longer, and it's not like you're it's. I hate when people say, oh, you're overdoing it. No, we're not overdoing it. We have the knowledge and the stuff, and that's just doing it the right way is how I feel about it. So. Yeah, we've got three of our, what I would consider, like, top guys here that all started sweeping the floors. I mean, you look at Little Mike, Jimmy, and Blake, yep. all guys that started sweeping the floors, and we've had hundreds of people sweep the floors since then. But those motherfuckers yeah. <laughs> swept the floor did it right. and yeah. cleaned things like you couldn't. Right. Like, like you've never seen and have just just exploded to the top. Yeah. You know, they had the work ethic and they, as you guys know, some people get it and some don't. Yep. I mean, we got a young guy, Colby, in there interning from McPherson College, and he's a young guy, and he's the first guy we've had in there. And I'm telling you, 
15 years that he walked in the door and we had the 41 sitting there and we talked about it for two minutes and the questions he asked and the way he looked at it, I knew he was the right guy. Yeah. Instantly. Yep. And he's got a little bit of a good experience and he's going to be a great guy. He's got one more year of school, but it's the first guy I've entered in a long time that has the right attitude, but has some experience in paint and body and, you know, doing everything, but he, but he knows how to look at something and ask the right question. It was, it was huge. So they always, the old saying is always you know, dress for the position that you want, not the position you have. I always look at it as like work. Work for the, yeah, for for the, the position, position that you want. you want, not the position you yeah. have. Yeah, no, advice, absolutely. Just yeah. Keep... I love rewarding the guys that just put their nose down, do the job, and don't ask for nothing. Yep. I mean, that's the best. That is. You know, them that's are the good. guys you want to give everything it's to. Hard, it's hard to beat work ethic. Just, yep. It's, good it's as impossible it gets. to beat work yeah. ethic. Yeah. It's absolutely impossible. Especially today. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, best car movie and why? Well, I'm sure everybody's saying Ford versus Ferrari, which is awesome. It's, um, that's been a couple of times, but not as much as you yeah. think. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll mention a few, and then we'll just say get to the top. But <laughs> Ford versus Ferrari is pretty cool. Used cars is pretty badass. Used cars. You've never seen it? I've seen it years ago. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a com- comedy movie. We're blowing the shit out of these prices, <laughs> and he's in the car lot next door blowing the car up with a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You haven't seen I it? Haven't seen oh, it. my <laughs> God, dude. No, I'm, write I'm it down. Used cars. Yeah. You, along you with seen used the goods. Yeah, with that's what I was going to say. Oh, it's phenomenal. Is it? Yeah. That he one never out. came up. No. Yeah. Oh. He's got a business card. It says, I sell cars, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> sell oh, the used metal. cars, man. Sell the metal. <laughs> yeah, he's, they're, they're two lots across the street. So the guy's in the other guy's lot at night and they're filming a commercial. He's dressed up like a cowboy and he's just fucking shooting the cars. We're blowing the shit out of these prices. You got to watch it's it. The other guy's lot. Yeah. And then, uh, Hollywood Nights was good growing up. That was pretty cool. But I'm going to say Fastest Indian because mm. of that's that guys that haven't been to Bonneville, that's the real deal. It's the guy in his one car garage dreaming about going there and making his own parts and spending every last dollar he's got to do it and getting out there and achieving something. I mean, that's Bonneville. That movie, after that movie came out, I'm telling you, the next year it went from 300 entrants to 500, and I'm telling you the crowd tripled Damn. from that movie. I mean, it's it's as big a gain for Bonneville as um, Drive to Survive is for F1. I don't know if you guys are in F1 oh, or yeah. not, yeah. but I mean, it tripled the F1's audience. Yeah, Damn. it was done right, but it really opened guys. I mean, I watch F1 my whole life, and. Now these guys, they don't, we don't miss a race, you know, and we're going yeah. to races, and that, it and made a fan out of me huge. because of the Netflix, huge, series. right? Because I, it, yeah, I didn't, I would come across it all the time, but it, the the level of entry of like, I, there's so much I didn't know, yeah. But being oh, able to start that series and go through it, then I was like, I could watch a race, and I knew a lot of the things that, that were going on. That You're an insider, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. And honestly, like, there's so much still you don't know. Like when you see yeah. it, yeah. when you see it, <laughs> when you see it in person, it's yeah. they wow. Went, they went to wow, the dude, race. Oh, you go to Miami? Oh, yeah. Here you go, Miami. Yeah. This this son of a bitch here. So it's his graduation weekend. We're down there. Yeah. And I said, hey, it graduation Saturday. Let's go down to the Miami race. You know, it's it's a couple hours south. He's in Tampa. Has. His girlfriend's mom was coming in town and they had all these plans. And so we didn't go to the Miami race. But uh, the revenue that thing was 10 times the Super Bowl. Yeah. You don't know? feel that Josh you didn't finally go either. have something in common with yeah. Troy. Neither one of you went to. Yeah. The Miami. I'm, yeah. We're yeah. going to Austin this year, though. <laughs> but I want to get in the paddock. You know what I'm saying? I don't. That'd be cool. Because I want to, the mechanical side of it wow. is what I want to be involved in. So I'm trying to. Did you just call him up and tell him who the fuck Yeah, you yeah, are? that worked. Yeah. Yeah. Who? <laughs> yeah. So I'm. I'm trying to work, you know, Mothers is a main TV sponsor, you yeah. know, obviously, and, and I'm trying to, CNRs, a few of them, but I'm trying to work some angles. I'd really like to, I don't want to meet any, I don't want to bother anybody. Just be there. I just, just want to see it. Give me the right? pass to be in. Yeah. I want to, you know, like the waffle clamps we use, you know, I seen them on Cruz Pedregon's car years ago, and just, yep. that's the stuff I'm interested in. So, but what that did for F1, the fastest Indian did for Bonneville. That's, that's why cool. it's it's uh, yeah, that was a great important. That was a great yeah. movie. It was a great that's never come up. and that was what Anthony Hopkins. Yep. Yeah, yep. Big, it was big very time well done. And you know the whole Southern California thing and going to Bonneville and the whole hot rod scene back then and what he did. It it it, it was uh, it's awesome. I mean, Ford versus Ferrari was well done. I've had luckily I had dinner with Carol Shelby a few times and that's sat awesome. across the table had dinner with Etzel Ford Jr. and stuff wow. and 
been lucky to just kind of listen in on some of them guys. So I knew a little bit more about that, Bob Bondurant and all them guys. But, uh, yeah, so that's uh, a fastest one. Indian, baby. That's cool. What's the very first car you ever owned and a funny story about that car? 66 Chevelle that my grandfather bought brand new. Uh, grew up in it. Had my uh, little 70cc Honda in the back seat, bringing it down to the, get nice. it fixed at the Honda store. And uh, the reason I got the car was... In that one car garage where my grandpa worked in the winter time, he'd pull the car out to do work in there, and it wouldn't idle, so he put a chunk of iron on the gas pedal. It went to the blew up. That's what <laughs> started my career. So he gave me the car when I was 14, and that's what started it. So, uh, so that was the first car I ever owned, and I actually drove it to school for a short time till they cut the grass and blew shit all over the side of it. So I'm like, that was the end of that. Yeah. And, uh, uh, met my wife in it, and. Uh, Rest is history. So, yeah. Uh, the last question before we end the interview is, what's in your pocket right now? You know, Adam told me you're gonna do that. And I was gonna put something in there fun, but <laughs> I mean, have. I know I, I thought about it and I couldn't come up with something cool. So I mean, I have nothing. I have a used, uh, got a used Raptor keys. That's it. So used Raptor keys, a phone, and a wore out wallet. <laughs> you a front pocket or back pocket wallet guy? Side pockets, baby. Side. Yeah, I'm a Cargos. surfer. Cargo, sir. Huh? Yeah, nice. I wear shorts year round. Do you really? No long pants. Huh. Every day to work in the winter. Wow, has it always been that yeah, way? Yeah, it's just more comfortable. I've just always like... been husky, so it's more comfortable <laughs> wearing shorts. You, Jeremy has a very, very polar specific, opposite. Uh... Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. This is, this is, uh, let's see if I got it in here. Let's see. Like, I've got new wallets, uh, that's, but that's Adam, an OG wallet. Adam has <laughs> sewn this back together a few times for me. <laughs> so let me see if I got it in here. That's decent. It's a good guy's seat. That's decent. No, I got it. Right here. <laughs> right here. So this is a hotel room key from uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky. And when I was coaching softball, uh, we were in a 90-team tournament. And we had our little team in Mantino, so we're a bunch of hillbillies, right? We'd come up here and beat the shit out of all you fancy people, right? <laughs> we, had, we had the chicks. We had the pitcher, right? So we went to a 90-team tournament in Kentucky with one pitcher in softball, which is kind of common because they can pitch all the time. But, um, we won the whole thing. We got, we won the whole tournament, uh, went nine and oh, yeah, 90 teams. So I've never taken it out of my wallet. So there's the hand bumps right there. Hell yeah. I, I, I'm yeah. sure I must have some, like you have probably of, seven rooms. I gotta have our there. most recent hotel <laughs> keys. Cause I usually pile, I never, they just stack up. I got a hotel key in here. Well, on the shorts thing, Jer Jeremy's, Jeremy's cool. Ex yeah, he's not very today. Anti shorts at work. That shorts are not allowed. Ah, that's in all the right. Shop I don't blame him for the most part. There's a there's a few. My son was wearing shorts today. As a matter of fact, yeah, they're, they look more like briefs. <laughs> 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 like kids these days, you know, he's what? Yeah. Fifteen. Okay, I got I got, I got good stories. Fifteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got two good stories. All right, good. You got <laughs> there good we stories. Go. Yeah. All right. Well, big thanks again to Troy Chapania. You can check him out on Instagram at rad underscore rides or catch episodes of Rad Rides by Troy on Amazon now. Next up, it's time for the glove box. It's time for the glove box. where We tell you about some of the new cool gear, guns, EDC shit, whiskey, and other stuff that we're into. I will say that I like having in-studio guests because they get to hang through all these segments as well. Yeah, they got to suffer through it. They got to suffer through it, right? <laughs> they get to or have to. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Either way, tomato, yeah. tomato. Position, position it how you will. This In the Glove Box segment is brought to you by <laughs> Blade HQ. Whether you're into cars, motorcycles, hunting, fishing, grilling, or any number of things, you've got the tools that you swear by. Have you ever noticed that the tool that finds its way into every job is a knife? I know it's not for you because you don't have a knife on you. None. No weapons. Surprising from down there in the sticks that you don't have a They've got knife. nothing to worry They've about. They've got no crime Yeah, there. when you're up here. Well, you, pocket knife's a like... tool to use for anything. Yeah. <laughs> he's, opening, he's opening beer bottles. You're going to start carrying a knife now after that? All right. Uh, do you have the knife that you swear by? If not, it's time you got yourself one. And Blade HQ is the place to get it. They've got knives to fit any hand, any belt, any job, and any budget. Just go to bladehq.com slash oil and whiskey to get your knife for you. All right, what do we have this week? What do you have in your pockets, Phil Gerber? Phil always uh, brings the dark horse shit that nobody else knows about. 
spends time Seek- on the internet all week long. Secretive motherfucker he is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. my A game. Yeah. Yeah. He's getting ready for single handedly yeah, downloading yeah. the entire internet. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Fucking samurai sword tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I go in spurts, you know, kind of do nothing for a while, hear the same old, same old, then bring some good stuff. Nice. Well, you guys have seen Step Brothers, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. See it, Randy <laughs> Jackson, sign your sword. Yeah. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> you don't not get Randy Jackson's <laughs> signature. <laughs> Uh, I gotta find Randy Jackson get an autograph. <laughs> he wouldn't be that hard to find nowadays. Oh, you got that little gust of sin on you, huh? Yeah. You guys have seen this guy. Oh, look at that. I got carried away on Blade HQ and uh it happened. started just going down a rabbit hole of buying a few things. Found this little uh Civivi. I don't even know what this one's called, but it's uh It's a raging endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you cut yourself. Is it blade ceramic or is it vapor deposition coated or what is it? Yep, it's black. That's it. <laughs> Phil, Phil did not do his research at all. I just bought it because it, cool it was cool and great for a desk knife opening up boxes, letters. Desk knife, see? Yep. I'm starting to rub off on yeah. you. Bam, there you have it. Do they have culinary knives under? I'll have to get yeah. under. Jack, yeah, they I'll do. have to check that out for me. Blade yeah, they, HQ. Yep. Yeah, I just saw they've got a whole thing of uh, Benchmade culinary knives. Oh, yeah. those are oh nice. So hand yeah, stuff. Really yeah, really cool yeah. stuff. Cool. Um, also, while I was on there, I'm going to go a little step further than the dad wallet and uh, with a dad keychain. No. Oh. So I got that little guy. A titanium. Oh, look at that. Little key ring. Again, just looking at cool shit, figured I should probably have that. You just got Dude, to that's, have it. That's three keys. Holy shit. It's, this is purging. This is uh, part of the 2022 purge. Three whole keys. <laughs> I got rid of... That collection of keys that I have no idea what they're for. <laughs> I had previously gotten rid of that. that you was show me that today. <laughs> this is that's from two buildings ago, right? Oh yeah. yeah. yeah this is was on Phil's keychain. Not sure what they're for. Eleven five twenty. Noted that out there. You think that's an EDM part? <laughs> Definitely the way it's cut for sure. Yep, I'd say so. I just wanted something different than the standard key ring. And it was cool. like How's six it working bucks out badass. It's a little hard to get the keys on there, but pretty That's cool. cool, though. Yeah, That's pretty cool beside the fact that Flytanium is the brand. Um, they do a bunch of titanium stuff. Um, cool, super light, a little different than your standard keychain. And I was able to purge five or six keys off my keychain <laughs> and get less <laughs> shit in my pockets. I, you still have them in your pockets? I brought them up there for today to I just did that like a that year ago. Shit. I cleaned off the keychain and I... I pulled off like two or three toolboxes ago. I had I had a keychain, a key on there from a toolbox I had when I was like 19 years old. Still on the same fucking key ring. Padlocks from shops, you know, from and way back five when. Five keys, I have no idea what yeah. they're for, but eh, it's carrying around every day. So. I just recently got a key to the front door of our shop. I didn't even have one. We had a key <laughs> pad in the back in this alley, <laughs> small door, and that's how I went in it. The number was, I can't say the number, but <laughs> anyway, it was a good number. <laughs> but yeah, I just recently got a key, so it was cool. 69, 69. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very similar. Good vintage year when oh, I was yeah. born. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, uh, that's all I'm rocking today. That's all. Just two brand new things from Blade HQ that you purchased without letting anybody, anybody know. know. Yeah. I didn't know that I needed to get your approval. Absolutely Mom. did not need to get approval, but I mean, a nice little text of, hey, I'm making an order from Blade HQ. Do you guys want anything, need anything, or would you like anything? Do you not have the internet? I know Troy doesn't, but... No, we don't have that. It's pull start down here. It's not even dial up. (laughs) Jeremy, what do you have in your pockets? And I'm I'm like repeating today. I got that JHO. Did you see his new one? He's just about to drop. No, I haven't. Cool little cleaver blade. I just dig the simplicity of it. It's got that tumbled finish. I'm a sucker for just style you know yep. tumbled finish it's got the little spun deal on there the spun hardware it's just a cool you'll, you'll like this troy this is, a, this is all handmade titanium it's a cool knife it is cool got the flipper deal that i, I dig the flippers i say it till i'm blue in the face i like the flippers you dig the flippers but yeah it's like a you hot like a fidget you like you're a fidgety guy. i do yeah it's like a little hot rod part you know shave too it's like yeah. a straight razor <laughs> But I thought today I was carrying it, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, if you got to stab somebody with this thing, because you know, 
in today's day and age, just some hairy shit going uh, on there. The cleaver blade, it's not real conducive to a stabbing. Oh, you got to go full yeah. Curtis Johansson. Yeah, slice yeah. him. You got to go this yeah, way. Back yeah, backhand. Yeah, 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 tough guy shit. Yeah. Steven Seagal. Yeah, I'm walking make, into the... I'm walking into the noise with right. it. Yeah. You can make uh, noise. I'm walking into the gas station. There's some shady characters in there today. And I'm like, man, if I had, like, needed this as self-defense, probably not going to cut it. Well, That's all I got. Give it a slash. Uh, I am... Uh, one of the little small protects, the little, uh, the little runt oh, five. Those little bangers. All blacked out. Yeah. It's funny how many times you have, you know, somebody's like, hey, let me see that. Hold yeah, on to it now. Yeah. It's always like, it, you know, <laughs> hold on to it because it's got some uh, <laughs> little, uh, nice little small. It's a little bit small, but it, uh, it works for, for some jobs. I like carrying it. It's got uh, the, nice. the spring from the bigger model that got well, put in there. Make sure you see which way it comes on and lose yeah. a finger here. Yeah, Man, that thing's got a spring. That sucker's yeah. thumb. It's got some yank. That is, you know, it's like my dog. It's got some bigger parts that it shouldn't have been. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, Troy, you've got... Cut it. Phil, <laughs> Phil has... First of all, he's got the whitest dog there is. That's a mini, <laughs> that's a mini golden doodle, right? Yeah. So Jumbo. Yeah, that is a... he. He's a size five dog with a size 12 johnson yeah. i mean it's, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a he's all day he's got a roller skate yeah. under the carrier or once they're all tore up <laughs> sucker is Man. huge but uh, he used to have he used to have the nuts that would go with it uh oh they clipped him up yeah he uh we had to bring him to the vet because he had a horrible rash between his back legs and the vet my <laughs> wife had to take him and the vet with balls. the straightest face ever said, well, um, we're going to give you some ointment to rub on your dog's legs. And my wife's like, well, what's causing the rash? Like, your dog has extremely large testicles. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog so, was it? It's, uh, it's a golden diesel. It's half yeah, golden, golden, half diesel. Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> golden or diesel. Or doodle. But yeah, it's uh, a good layman. <laughs> the, the golden doodles that's the same dog that michael vick fought right wasn't it didn't he have a I whole so. string of oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. doodles yeah. Think, fighting golden yeah. doodles yeah. yeah i think that's what beat michael vick's dog yeah super badass yeah that's awesome uh <laughs> so what are we drinking this week fellas this was your pick barrel. right yeah i feel like it's, it always falls on me you guys sit there and you hem and haw and then i gotta make, it is, make it, the is it does come to you so this is the fable and foley from orphan barrel Fable and Folly? Folly, Foley. Orphan Barrels. You got your readers on there, Josh? It's, it's written in a fucked up. Yeah, place. the Orphan Barrel stuff's awesome. I came across it with the uh, Barter House, which I have, uh, I don't think I've finished more bottles than the Orphan Barrel Bottle House, Barter House in my day. And uh, seldom do they come out with something new. That Fable and Foley dropped recently. It's a 14 year. Awesome. Everything I've had from them's super good. I mean, you're, What'd you think? You you crushed a glass of it. <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down. Diesel fuel, hot, it's hot. Yeah, hot. If you guys doesn't, Brett, uh, he messes with whiskey now, right? Yeah, Air ride, Brett. Have yep. you tried any of their stuff or whatever? I, I don't. I didn't know he's even doing it. I just talked to him about it. We yeah. ran into him in Scottsdale, and he was talking. Yeah, about Yeah, that's where I seen him at the auction. Yeah, yeah. He drinks yeah. a lot of Jim Beam, so I don't know that. But this is I, supposed I, to be. Uh, he, drinks, he just drinks a lot. Yeah, if, you know, of, of everything. I will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. If somebody's going to know anything about whiskey consumption, it would be Brett. Yeah, but I guess he's doing. He's getting bottle or barrels. Yeah, they're buying barrels and yeah. selling it. Yeah, his son and him and that. Yeah. but I met Brett. Good story, Brett's story, quick one. But me and him used to go to dinner. Nineteen eighty six Street Machine Nationals. He worked for BDS. Damn, that was when he had the Mustang. Yep, BDS trailer. That's cool. Yep, and then we were kind of down and I made buddies with him back then. So yeah, we've known Brett a long time. Yeah, Brett's does really good, well. dude. Yep, done, done phenomenal. Happy well. for him. Yep. What's the uh, every single week we rate the whiskey that we're drinking? What's the number? Uh, what's the proof on that? It's ninety. Ninety proof. Yep. I, I like it, man. I'm gonna. I'm going to hit that at a 7-2 because it Everybody is, knows the rules one drink. Yeah, oh, you know right, one Dave? drink? Right. Hey, everybody <laughs> knows the rules. <laughs> drink, everybody knows it's hard, the it's hard, rules. Right. It's yeah. hard, to, hard to rate anything after the you know, fucking pizza review, dude. The, uh, the pre- Presidente. Uh, have you I seen, mean, dude, I like 
for, out of all the things I'm into and like out of all the things that stimulate me, how the fuck I can sit there and watch like an hour and a half of pizza reviews at night when I, like I can't sleep. I'll be sitting there watching, watching his pizza. Reviews. They're phenomenal. The one best, day. the best is the one he did on the blaze. <laughs> Which was that? That LeBron owns. I didn't oh, see I it. Oh, fuck. He hates him. Obviously, you know yeah. that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he's at the blaze. That's, have you guys been to the blaze before? No. It's actually pretty cool. It's like Subway of pizza. So you go there and tell them what you want on it, and they, you know, oven cook it yeah. and the whatever, stone hut bullshit, whatever, wood fired. And it, it's pretty, it's decent, you know. But he, you know, he hates the bronze. He's like, I'm going to give a fair, fair, you know, uh, score on this. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to let, you know, and he just starts bashing yeah. him and everything, this and that. So he goes on and on and on and talking about the dickhead that made the pizza and making him wait and everything else. But I'm going to be fair and all that. Takes one bite, throws it down. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard oh, the zero watch it. Yeah, <laughs> just just look it up. You'll fucking push your pants. Oh, uh, dude, I get such a kick zero. out of here, man. He's just fucking right. Oh, Jack loves him. I didn't even know who he was until they started watching dude, him. Dude, yeah. we're gonna try to have Dave on the on the podcast. That's, uh, that's, if we could uh, pull, if we could pull list. that off, man, yeah. it's a bucket list item. Uh, he's a solid, solid dude. I get. We uh, got fucking Troy on. Some it's true. Yeah. yeah, at this point, like, you know, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. like getting Bezos and him on, they're probably <laughs> yeah, not yeah, that, yeah, yeah, not yeah, that yeah. far out yeah. of line, man. Get Musk on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you learn some weird shit. Yeah, that's what I that's what I'd Yeah. 7-2. Yeah. What's your number? It's a review. Seven and a quarter. 7-2-5. Seven, 7-2-5. Seven, <laughs> shit. He's got to just, 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 just a little bit nicer. Put a little icing on the cake there. Yeah, I'm just giving it a seven. It, it, I mean, it's good. Didn't, didn't blow yeah. me away. I don't, I don't just throw my numbers around. That was. That seemed like you wanted to give it a seven, but you felt like that would be lazy, so you put the two five on. I think so. The two yeah. on it. But hey, it's a review. Before we close the show, we've got a very special edition of story time. So Troy and his son have been gracious enough to stay on a little later <clears throat> to give us some stories. All right, here we go. So me and Chip Boost been buddies since 1990. We met at SEMA. And spent a lot of time when he worked for Boyd out there and buddies came to my wedding, blah, blah, blah. So uh, we don't get to see each other a lot, but we've done some pretty cool shit together. Race Baja, um, 1,000 together back in 07. Been to Tokyo Auto Show and lots of different things. But so uh, who was it? Let's see. Whatever the tire manufacturer was. Gosh, damn, I'm drawing a blank. Toyo or somebody, shit, I don't remember. Anyway, they, they want to know if we want to go to the auto salon in Tokyo. I'm like, yeah, that sounds cool. And, um, you know, it was me and Chip. And then I don't know if you guys ever met Brad Gerber. Did you ever meet Brad? He was he was like the head of marketing at, back when it was Peter, Peterson Publishing. And then it was, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. But now I think his last job was head of uh, marketing at NHRA. Great guy, a lot of, lot of enthusiasm. So, so I fly to California to meet Chip. We were leaving from there to go to Tokyo. I get there. Of course, he's dicking around. We go over to, over to the Boyd shop. I think he was still there at the time. And Little John was in there, and he was supposed to do something for Little John. He didn't do it to the last minute, blah, blah, blah. We go through all that. And we're supposed to leave the next day. And I'm like, hey, you know, you got your passport? Oh, shit. <laughs> so about 10 at night, he drives to Santa Barbara, you know, where his mom and dad are. You get his passport. No, don't have it. So the next morning, like, we're, you know, we've got a plane flight to go to Tokyo. So me and Brad Gerber get on there, and he can't go because he don't have a passport. So he had to stay behind and get the passport. So we get on, what, Japan Airlines or wherever it was, and you get drunk halfway there on domestic beer, then you drink this Japan crap, blah, blah, blah. So we land. Chip comes the next day, and we do the show. It's pretty cool and all that. So then we had like a day to just do whatever we want. So we're like, you know, let's, and Chip doesn't drink a lot, hardly ever, but I tend to bring out the best in him. So, and then Brad Gerber <laughs> is a professional that's with us. Yeah, with a name like that. Yeah. yeah so, drinker. yeah, Gerber, yeah, right? Shit, yeah, I didn't put two yeah, and two that together. Fucker, that fucker yeah. parties. Yeah, sure. no, yeah, no, no, no affiliation. Right. So we're like, let's do something fun. So we get on the, the bullet train. And, and first we go to the Tokyo train station, hands down the busiest place I've ever been on planet Earth. I mean, you just sit back on the edge and look and see what is going on. It's unbelievable. So we get on the bullet train, and they have beer on there. So, of course, 
me and Brad we started drinking, we get chip drinking, and we it's like a whatever, maybe a half hour ride. Things going two, three hundred mile hour. We go over to Mount Fuji, so you go from the busiest place literally on Earth to be like going to our little town, and we get off the train and been drinking pretty good and of course chip had been busy so his hair's all wavy like it is and you know fancy he's shit. got a beautiful salad yeah 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 so he's got it all saddled out yeah. and sweepy and so we're like you know we should get his hair cut right so we're in this mount fuji i'm telling you <laughs> and it's like in the middle of fucking it's like going back to our little town literally there's nobody there so we're walking down this alley and we're like oh there's a place right there so so we go up and we're pretty good into the drinking by now and, and so we, and we have a fucking video camera and i gotta get the footage because <laughs> I don't know who has it, but I think Brad or somebody has. But oh, I mean, we it need, is we fucking need to pipe that priceless. In. So we go up these steps, and of course, no English, right? And Brad's hammered, and he's the interpreter, fuck, talking to this chick, you know. <laughs> and 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 I had just got my hair cut pretty short, you know, pretty shaved almost, right? And so and he's got this big bushy flowing mess, you know. And he's pointing at me, and he's got the little video camera, and we sit him down, and chips down where he's at, you know, he's got like two beers, he's fucking gone. <laughs> Literally shave his fucking head. <laughs> I mean, fucking bald, right? I mean, I'm like literally blacked out. I can't even fucking stand. I'm laughing sorry because this other asshole Gerber that's with us is fucking narrating and telling the lady, no, shorter, shorter, shorter. <laughs> Chip's just going along he with it. No, fucking, idea. no, he's just fucking laughing. He's got that crooked laugh, you know, and we're just fucking having a great time. So they fucking shave his head, oh, literally. Shit. We. So we fucking leave there and we can't even fucking take it. We go to this little <laughs> fucking shop and get some sake and we get back on a bullet train and so then we drink on the way back to Tokyo. We get there and he's like a fucking disaster at this point. So we go and <laughs> we go to eat somewhere and I don't even remember where the hell we were at and we're telling jokes and laughing and carrying on and he's fucking laughing and I look over there and he's got his napkin and he's fucking throwing up this <laughs> napkin. And he just throws it under the fucking table and we just keep going, right? <laughs> So Shooting then we rally. go, we're at the Shanghai Prince Hotel over here, right? They have a 50-lane fucking bowling alley in the hotel, in the basement. Shit. So we're like, hey, it's a good idea. Let's go bowling, right? Oh, I got a fucking another story, too. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so all Tokyo. So I'm, and they got the monitors, right? And we got a pitcher of beer, and I'm like sitting there, and I'm a pretty fucking good bowler, right? And I'm taking it fairly serious as you can at that point. And I, I'm getting ready, and I, I go back, and I... Making my approach, I swing back. The fuckers take the whole pitcher of beer and throw it out on the fucking bowling lane <laughs> <laughs> underneath my feet. And, of course, that fuck, I'm locked up, fucking, you know, messed up. But, I mean, it was just, it was unbelievable. So that was one Tokyo thing. So then this is this is the fucking killer here. So we're, we're like, hey, you know, let's, oh, fuck, two more. Hold on. Just, <laughs> just before, keep them fucking Before you coming, go to the next man. one. You're telling me that bald Chip Foose is the one oh, that's throwing dude. beer. <laughs> yes. I'm on my, I got to see a picture I'm on my approach, and they toss the entire pitcher of beer out under my feet. <laughs> <laughs> it has 50 lane hole in hell. I'm like, fuck them, I'll break my neck. So uh, so then we're like, the next day, we're like, you know, we should, uh, me and Chip, just a, this is a quickie. So we decided, let's go, like, just walk. Because in Tokyo, like, the alleys, there's like 52 restaurants every block in the alley. They use every square centimeter of the place. So... Or I got him drinking again, and we go in this place, and it's like the local place. There might be 10 seats in there. There ain't no fucking menu. You sit on these, bring you this broth shit, you know. And I mean, we could have been eating a, who knows, a rat, you know. And all these, we're looking around, and Chip, we're laughing, and these, all these local guys are looking at you laughing. And I mean, they're just carrying on, blah, blah, blah. So then we're like, we hook up with Gerber, and we get in this taxi cab. He goes, hey, I got, we're going to go to this place. It's pretty cool. I'm like, we're like, yeah, whatever. So he's in the front seat. And the cab driver, of course, no English. And he's acting, this goofy prick's acting like he can't get a seatbelt on, right? He's like, won't latch, won't latch. And so the guy reaches over to help, and he's like, oh, you're touching my pee-pee, you know? And all this shit, and he's just fucking going on and on. I'm like, shut the fuck up, man. This guy's going to drive us out in the middle of nowhere and kill us, right? I'm thinking... Uh, at this point, I'm thinking about my family. Like, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna get home. They'll never, they'll never find you. If you ever been to Tokyo, they're like, you'll never find you. So we go and they drop us off this place. I'm like, where the fuck are we at? And this little Chinese chick comes up, look like a chipmunk. And I, I do this whistle. I'll try to do it. Hang on, hang on. Anyway, I'm doing this shit, and they're cracking up, and he's trying to get this Chinese chick to do it, and it's a mess, whatever. Next thing I know, we're, we're in a three-person elevator. And I'm like, where the fuck are we going? 
we, and we're in this fucking whorehouse, basically, on this third <laughs> floor. And I'm thinking, okay, we're never getting back to America. Yeah, we're done. Right? We're done. We're done. I'm like, you motherfucker better get us out of here. So me and Chip left. I don't know what happened to him, but anyway, it was... Uh, it was it was an incredible <laughs> PR team swooped yeah. in. Oh no, yeah. it was yeah, it was an incredible. This is, this is probably pre chips yeah. celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Uh, let's see, that have been probably yeah before we did overhaul and and because I, I did two of those out of the first seven. I'm like yeah. I'm out, you know, and then whatever. But and then um, so then we're in uh, Americruise in uh, let me see, we're in Omaha, Nebraska. Got him out the bar again. We're down the street drinking this and that, and you guys know Larry Erickson. Maybe from yeah, no yeah, like designer name. Yeah. Great guy, yeah. first class guy, right? Well, I end up carrying fucking Chip back to the hotel like two blocks. He's like done walking, right? He can't even <laughs> function <laughs> anymore. Fucking... And then somehow he got his hands on some pizza, and we're standing in the elevator, and he wants to high five me with this pizza in his hand. So we high five, and I mean the door opens. He's laying on the ground crying. There's Larry Erickson. So I mean Larry was a <laughs> Larry was a pretty like head designer guy at the time. We're like, oh boy. So anyway, it was. <laughs> We've had a lot, I had a lot of fun with Chip, and uh, a lot a lot of guys don't see that side of him, and it was it was uh, it was fun, and then like Danny at SEMA, forget about it, man. Uh, you can go ahead and share a Danny story. Okay, yeah. so Danny well, we had time. So Danny at SEMA, it's it's like honestly half the reason I even go to SEMA anymore <laughs> is just to walk around with him, right? He's my go to guy. Like if somebody traps you and they're wearing you out, he'll hey, we got to get to the booth over oh, yeah, there. You, got, you know, one of them deals, right? Great at that. Or he'll come in, we'll be talking to somebody, and he'll join in the conversation, kind of like wedding crashers. And he'll just start going along with them, and they're thinking, I must know this guy. You know, he's talking to me, you know. You go up to the hotel, right, and you walk in, you, the lady's behind the counter, you work here? <laughs> you know, it's just, honest I to God, like, though. It's, I feel it's, like he's got to be, we had a nickname, Uncle Danny. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah because he's, he's got this, the sto- like, yeah. stories, the one-liners he does, man. that he's got are legendary. Yeah. It's definitely about the people. That's oh. I guess oh, yeah. you know. I mean, that's it's good, uh, dude. Fun yeah, Danny, stuff. They don't, Fucking they don't love Dan him, but... Yep. <laughs> I will. I want to personally thank you because we've been going back and forth with with Chip and uh, you know his people trying to set everything up on, and there's been dates and stuff that didn't work. I feel confident that we will never. No, no. Ship. <laughs> after after this, no, he'll show up. I'll make uh, him show up. After yeah. this episode, we can gonna, leverage it. It's going <laughs> to yeah. be a rebuttal. It's going to be a, a rebuttal for sure. It's be like, it wasn't that short. It was like a two blade in the yeah. top. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, God, he's got the video, I think, or Gerber. I mean, I got to get it for you guys now. I'll have Jack research it because I'm telling you, I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. We, I mean, that needs to be for this uh, episode for sure. They can, they can, uh, it was cool though. Magic. He, he came to my wedding and it was cool because I gave him a. He goes, "Hey, send me a, I don't know, it was like a damn wallet photo or some shit box. I don't know if maybe it was our goddamn engagement photo. I don't know. I sent him a little bitty one and he he did a really nice pencil drawing of that. Oh wow! And that was our wedding gift and I got it hanging in the house. It was really cool. So we've we've cool. we've got to do some really fun shit together. That's for sure. Like that's racing awesome. the Baja and all that stuff. And we've just we've just became you know friends over the probably the last four or five years um you know great customer great great guy um and you run into these circles and you hear all these different stories about and that's yep. that's that's really cool he's legit and i had him and his dad actually came out and chopped we did a 39 chevy back in 93 94 and i had no business chopping the top so him and his dad came out on the weekend and we chopped the top together sam was a great guy too he was a he was a cool cat so i'm just that's a, never that's a gonna cool get deal the image of Oh, uh, no, I'm yeah. telling you, man. No, shorter, shorter. <laughs> fucking Gerber's telling you shorter, shorter. And I'm like, oh, motherfucker, man. That language barrier, dude. Oh, I, I mean, no. I, you just think about, like, if that was, if we had that situation going on, dude, I would have scalped you. Oh, yeah, I'd have been yeah, like, yeah. yeah. No, it was yeah, zero. Straight razor. Yeah. 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 God, it was so funny, man. I'm like, I'm the eyebrows, what. too. Like, the eyebrows got to go. Oh, well, <laughs> that's, I think that's probably the greatest story time we've ever had. Pretty yeah. solid. I, while <laughs> while we're recording, while we actually have it, where we can hold it uh, against you, you got to promise you're going to come on and do this again. Oh, absolutely. absolutely! Yeah, we no, so much blast. Fun, man. Yeah, hundred percent. Absolute blast. Well, thanks again for everybody listening to Oil and Whiskey with the Roadster Shop and Ironclad Original. If you like the show, be sure to leave us a rating and review. And if you listen to this show, how could you not like it? Not for us, but for Troy. Thanks again to our guest Troy Chapanier. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>